Okay. We're we're going. Oh, we're live. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> so good observation there, <laughs> Scotty. At his ripe old age, he still can he'll surprise you. Ah, sometimes. <laughs> Not all the time, but sometimes. I click the link. <laughs> I click the link. Dude, what? I just got no I just got a notification. We're live. <laughs> oh well, good. No shit. Well, it says well, it says Zero uh, Fed is got live. you watching us. <laughs> Zebra Fett's live. I wonder what he's talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go tune in. Right? Well, I would tune in. I would what tune are... in, but to be honest, this is what I think about Ryan's channel. Oh my god, I don't care. I do not I I don't care. Wow. <laughs> I want him to whip it out. Oh no, no, it's still there. Oh, <laughs> oh look. Uh, <laughs> this guy is falling. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's Howdy. going on? Welcome to the Four Nerds episode 169. As you oh, all this know, this is the best one. <laughs> are you sure about that? <laughs> I feel pretty confident. Okay, that's fair. I uh, we appreciate everyone showing up and thank you for joining us on another four nerd discussion don't mind him he's losing his voice <laughs> or rather he, he, he's getting he it just back. got it back he lost no, it I'm now he's slowly just got it getting it back it's, it's not fully back yet yeah not yet not yet not yet soon soon soon, soon. soon. soon it will be back soon so as you can tell dawson is, will not be with us today he's on assignment but we are talking about one of our one of the best shows out there right now. Not those two guys. Uh, but we're talking about X-Men 97. Oh, look at this guy. He had it all X-Men 97. There it up. is, baby. Wow. I know. I haven't seen the third episode. Have you guys seen the third episode? They watched oh it last God. night on Andre's live stream. Oh, okay. Watch okay. party. I've only seen two. You haven't seen the, the third one? I just that got was the whole... <laughs> You know, I remember the days when Ryan used to get up early before he had to go to work to watch an episode of a show. Now I get up and draw my comic. So I don't. I shifted. Uh, Phil, <laughs> did you priorities. watch the entire episode? Yeah, you did. I you were, did. You were commenting yeah, I, I, I was. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't chime in. Like, like I was telling Sean, I I can do commentaries, but I can't really do like watch parties because I have a hard time like p trying to pay attention to the conversation and then watch the thing at the same time. Like, I, yeah. so as soon as the episode started at midnight, I watched it and then I came back to your to your channel to see what you guys had to say about it. But Usually, yeah. w when I do a watch party, like after it's over. Then, like, the next day, I'll watch it Everybody again. leaves. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch it again because I'm like, because, you know, you, you're always looking out for stuff. Like, you know, I'm looking for the chat. I'm looking at what's going on over here. But uh, the episode itself was really good. I really enjoyed it. it. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to spoil it for Ryan or yeah, I don't, don't know. If, spoil I, it. I, I, mean, I don't know if he cares. Then get the fuck out. You're not here for the conversation. Nope, not here. Get oh, the look, fuck out. But I, I am here for this. Get, get the fuck oh, out. Thank you, Jason McKenzie. Showing, showing up. Thank you, Jason. Yes, we are doing well. And, um, and uh, I know that Andre has something queued up for you. Uh, I thought you were doing that, so here we go. <laughs> I'll do, I'll go this go. one's for you, Jason McKenzie. Oh, wait, that's, that's the Dawson. That's one. not it. <laughs> I, I want it. Wow. So violent. <laughs> okay. All right. I want it. Uh, but thank you for the uh, $40 in the New Zealand currency. Woo -hoo! Um, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what's up. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. That's as why Jason's always. a badass. And I hope you're having a good night as well. Um, Although I yeah, think for him, oh, it's, it's almost. Early uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like early morning, I think. Yeah. Hey, it's early morning. Uh, Andre loves Morbius. Thank you, Jack Pierre. <laughs> no, hey, that's not. A, I don't think he's an Aussie. I should he's, say he's it's on one a, p.m. Actually, in New Zealand. Right oh, now. so he he's, oh, he's okay. driving right now. He's like, let's yeah. go. Hey, yeah. Um, and Jack Pierre, I was really worried about Jack because I mean, as some of you guys saw, there was that huge accident that happened uh, in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So I had I had to out you, Jack. But Jack lives in the Baltimore area. And that bridge, the key bridge, got taken down by yes. that freighter ship. I was like, holy crap. So my mind's thinking, like, watch. How much you want to bet freaking Jackson be on that bridge going to work or something? Like, ah! 
<laughs> it's terrible. I mean, that was a huge tragedy. But he's okay, though. Yesterday. He's okay. Yeah, yeah. They they had what like a search and rescue for like ten to fifteen or ten to twenty people. Yeah, especially those. Con there was a cr a, a construction like crew forty degree yeah. working water. on the bridge too. And yep. uh, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, there were six of them. They've only last I read uh, a few hours ago. They only found two of them. Um, and I don't. And I, I I think they unfortunately just found their their bodies. They didn't they didn't survive. Yep. And the other four they haven't found yet. That is truly tragic. That is important. I, I think it's even crazier is that how much of the incident was caught on film. On, yeah, that's, yeah, that is that is crazy that they were like, look, like that look, you look what's don't going get, on. Yeah, usually something like that you they don't catch, but the, of the various cameras on whether it was buildings or traffic cams actually caught <laughs> pretty pretty they, well. I think actually. they even caught the the guy responsible. Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. I, was, I don't want to joke too much about that. It's, was, it's, it's that not. Was, we, that, but we had that, a clip. We had a clip. That of was the captain. poor taste. Oh. Very poor mm. taste. Too soon, um, too soon, too, too soon. soon. Okay, too soon. Right too right soon. Right. I don't know if there's ever going to be a good time for that, but I don't think right there now, ever be a good time. Let's right make a 9 11 joke. So. No. Oh, uh, no. Whoa, whoa. But, but don't similar to what Sean was saying, though, it was soon. fascinating that there was so much video yeah. footage of the event. I was like, my God. And what's funny is that uh, the first How time the I fuck saw did it. How get from X Men to this? I don't know. I yeah, know, right? Well, no, what was crazy was the first time I saw it was. It was a video posted on Twitter, and it had some kids talking over it. And they were like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at that, dude. Oh, my God. And I was like, wait, mm -hmm. where is this coming from? Like, where where did this get recorded from? Because yeah. it had kids commentating over it. And they're like, everyone that bridge just died, dude. And that's when I was like, this has got, this has got to be fake, right? Well, and I then, think we shifted here because of Jack. Um, yeah, no, yeah, Jack oh, Pierre. There we go. We just yeah, yeah, Jack Pierre. And uh, uh, last thing I'll mention on it, so, yeah. And Jack Last saying, yeah, there's... On it is they were actually, the, the police were trying to rush to the scene because cars were still going up on parts of the bridge that hadn't collapsed. So they were trying to get there before those cars actually drove off yeah. the, the edge, rough. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, because, um, I mean, when you're driving a lot of the time, you're just like, you know, just sort of in autopilot. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, just like, you know, runners or whatever, you know, they'll run the wrong direction and shit, you know, even though there's signs and whatever, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want to get that shit locked down. Well, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, our hearts and prayers go out to the families and, and, yeah. and everyone who who suffered losses on that accident. However, man, I tell you what, if I was driving to work and that happened, holy shit, that would be terrifying. Yeah, absolutely terrifying. But to switch gears, let's talk about X Men '97. Now, we haven't had a real chance to talk about the entire series in general, so why don't we do that now before we get to episode three? Uh, so far, I've absolutely loved this show. I think it's great. I, th I think it's honed in on on the X Men, and, and it really feels like for the first time in a long time, I'm seeing like real X Men, you know, uh, and and I love it. I love that they redid the intro, but they kept it the same. They just reanimated it. I thought that was really cool. Uh, the animation in general looks a lot better, uh, better than What If, and better than anything else they've done. And I would argue that this show is actually. <clears throat> one of the better shows that Disney Plus has even put out aside from like obviously like Loki and maybe Moon Knight uh, I mean there's been some good ones but this this is right up there with the best ones I think from an animated perspective it's hands down without question probably the best thing on Disney Plus just pure apps yeah, yeah, abs absolutely like, i agree yeah because you know it's it's like it's kind of like a, an apples to pears thing if you're going to compare it to like the likes of like loki moon knight miss marvel what <laughs> I, I mean what if would be a more fair comparison but it, but again like they go with some really kind of goofy looking cgi 3d modeling there whereas with this it's just straight up like animation that is a little bit more polished and pretty and pristine mm -hmm. as opposed to like you know the original 90s tv show which was hand-drawn animation because it's clear, like it, it, it looks like it's kind of oh, like yeah. a mix between you know drawn on a computer mm. and maybe some hand hand drawn stuff. Best thing since the Dark Knight. Yeah. There we okay. Go. There Thanks, we go. David. Thanks, James. We appreciate it. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, dude. The the, fir the, fir the first two episodes of this show, uh, honestly, for me, like I loved episode three, but I still think like episode two is like the best one so far because that speech Magneto gives at the at at the fucking court hearing. Oh, oh my god, so good. that so was good. fucking phenomenal! Like leaps and bounds, the, some of the best shit I've seen in any X Men anything ever. Magneto fucking owned that trial, and it was yeah. fabulous in every sense of the word. Oh my god, just an absolutely spectacular episode. His dialogue that he gave when they were hovering almost above the orbit. Earth. Yeah. Oh my that, god, that was so good. I was like, yeah, and, he's, and like 
he's basically right. just like telling them, you know, I am trying to change for the sake of my late friend. Hold me to it and I will hold you to it as well. Like I'm paraphrasing here, but he's basically telling mm -hmm. them like, I want you to hold me to it or something to that effect. He's basically holding them as if they're in the palm of his hand. Like, don't make me fucking regret this. Because I will drop you. If I have nothing to lose anymore, your asses will get dropped. Do not make me regret my decisions in, in any of this so far. Like, he Ooh. totally owned up to everything that he'd done, but mm -hmm. at the same time, he made a case for the fact that his people, not only as a Holocaust survivor, but also as a mutant, have been hunted while all they're trying to do is just live amongst fucking humanity. It is, without question, some of the most best writing I've seen in anything mm -hmm. Marvel in, like, the last five years. Straight yeah. up. I'll His character that. owned the last 10 to 15 minutes Fuck of yeah, episode two. Yeah. I mean, from oh, the yeah. trial okay. to above the earth, to, then to the, the, the talk over when we see Storm, you know, Storm leaves. We Cortez, see Cortez. You know, do not make me let you down. That That is yes. top tier. Yes. Beautiful. Then we see it was, that, it, it that little bit with him and Rogue. I was like, oh, so God. I, that, and then that's what, you know, you know, uh, Andre. Yeah, I, I get that that's sort of a thing like Rogue and Magneto. But I was like, isn't he like fucking old as shit? You know? And and she's like in her I, mid twenties. I think when you, when you compare him to like Ian McClellan, I think you would say, "Whoa, that's a senior." Uh, yeah, I, if, but, you're, if you're looking at like Anna Paquin and Ian McKellen, then you, yeah, sure. It's yeah, that'd be like kind of strange. But this is like you know, like you have her. <clears throat> yeah, we have a Hefner situation here. Yeah, the, uh, this is a man pushing fifty five and a woman probably pushing thirty. There's it's it's not completely strange or out of the ordinary. And, and to be honest, I mean Magneto was pretty shredded. Yeah, <laughs> Daddy's got some okay. fucking guns under those under those. I arms, would say bro. this is more like you know seeing I don't know Anna Paquin and uh, the main villain from Avatar. You know what I mean? Where he's just like oh, a God. ripped dude. You know what I mean? Stephen Someone who's Lang. in like great shape. Yes, and you're just like okay, well I got. I don't know, man. But they have like a history years, too, though. Sure. Uh, gap twenty years gap. That's gonna. Yeah, but yeah. they have a history, and they allude to that as well. He's yeah. like, "Are you ever yeah. going to tell them about us?" She was like, "You know, we don't talk about that." You know. Well, at one point, Rogue. We don't was talk about fact, Bruno. Like one, at one point, it. Rogue was in fact like on Magneto's side. Like she was yeah. part of the Brotherhood. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so that's she got the abilities from uh, Miss Marvel. Was when she was part of yep. the uh, the Brotherhood Brotherhood of Evil Mutants with her adoptive mother, which was. Um, I Mystique. just watched that episode like three weeks ago. It's still awesome. It's like beautiful, beautiful episode. And, and we got the little snippet of Gambit kind of witnessing this. Yeah, yeah. And he when drops, he drops like his card. He drops his card. The Queen so of Hearts. Be, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. Really interesting to see how that plays out, and whether it's the next episode or the next, or maybe the one after, where what rift does this now cause with him and the group, and then yeah. with Rogue and the group, if she starts to get back into that same that relationship that they had previously. Yeah. What I like the most about the ending of the second episode was that you know they knew that going into this that episode one, episode two were likely going to premiere back to back. I think they knew that ahead of time, oh, and yeah. so at the end of episode two, the way that they they did it, it reminded me a lot of the endings of like the Christopher Nolan you know Batman trilogy, where you know. Uh, where you have this dialogue, you know, over all these different scenes, and you have this, you know, you know, intense kind of pacing music, and it was just really cool to see the, see them do that, and then end with him opening the door, and you see Jean Grey. Oh, I need it's, the X Men. I like, wouldn't what? even call it like the trilogy. I would just say they keep kind of ending it in a similar fashion to like Batman Begins, where it's like you know, yeah. you show off the Joker card. It's doing an essence of that. <laughs> every time so far like the first episode ends with magneto presenting the last will and testament of charles xavier and saying to to me my x-men like and he's taking hold of them episode yeah. two ends with fucking jean gray coming to the x-mansion being like i need the x-men and then there's other jean gray holding baby nathan summers next to cyclops and everyone's just like what the fuck is happening and then I won't say what happens at the end of episode three, but episode three absolutely sets up another story that they're pulling from the comics, Life, Death. If anyone's familiar with that, it is very storm centric. Well, so yeah, I, I, the only thing I didn't uh, didn't really resonate with me was just the whole, you know, last will and testament of, you know, um, a Professor X, you know, saying, you know, this is my X-Men or whatever, like. Bitch, you don't know me. Like, I, I quit. And like, I would. I mean, all of them should have just. Oh, fuck you. I quit. Like, 
I'm sorry, but it's like, you know, now you're my X-Men. You work for me now. Like, that does, that's not how it fucking works. You know, it's not, it's, it's not like, wait a minute. We, we swore an oath to him, not to you. Oh, we're it's trapped. A, it's so a like, thing the that, 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 that they're, they're kind of alluding to that almost happened in Marvel Comics proper. where Chris, right, where, So Chris Claremont, at the, by the end of Uncanny X-Men 300, wanted Magneto to be the new head of the X-Men. He was going to have him do a full heel turn, become a hero, and have mm-hmm. him lead the X-Men and permanently kill off Charles Xavier. Savior. it was kind of a it, it's kind of a nod to that in in a certain respect sure, sure because because the end of the series that you know the original series they say that charles like dies but he's really off with the shiar empire getting mm-hmm. healed by them that mm-hmm. so th- they effectively have to treat him like he's dead and i'm pretty sure the rest of the x-men kind of understand this but they're still even uh, having to adjust to the idea of like oh fuck he left all of us to Magneto. At some point, like I see your, I see your point. Like, uh, yeah, no, they should just quit. But at the same time, it's like, would Professor X want them to do that? I don't think so. Matter. It's it's what they want to do. No, you know, because it's it's, it's nope. It's it's bigger gonna, than it's bigger push. than just like, oh well, I guess you're the new le- team lead. Um, uh, I guess we'll mm-hmm. just follow you. No, and, and the leader we've had actually, issues the leader, with you in the past, the and and all kinds of you know uh, uh, animosity and and just you know an engagement. And stuff like that for them to just say, okay, well, um, I guess we'll just accept you as our new leader. And, but that's just it. They don't outright accept him as the new leader. The whole second episode is it like was proof skeptical. Of that concept. That's it. That's all they were. They were skeptical. And uh, uh, Summers was the only one that was like more vocal than anybody else. Because I think there and, might and just the be a, a why he was sense more vocal of, uh, was because responsibility. He was, yeah, because he had the responsibility of the team. And then that responsibility is being taken from him but due to a, time, you know, uh, to a last will and testimony. So right. he's like, fuck. They're you know, honoring they, the like, decision that Charles Xavier right. made. Right. That's what they're, that's what they're doing. Oh, and I get that. They don't I agree get with it. it. They're like, well, this was a decision he made. He must have done it for the right reasons. And so, um, you know, obviously it turned their, one of their greatest villains into their. Well, uh, are we also just going to forget the entire arc where mm-hmm. Magneto and Professor X are literally running through Savage Land together? Because that totally fucking happened in the original series, too. And they are friends for a reason. And I, I don't put it past Charles Xavier to do something like that without nothing short of the best intentions for the X-Men. And honestly, even having Magneto, again, giving that awesome speech at the end of episode two, being like, don't make me let you down. Straight up, he's trying to change. And that is character development 101. It's fucking magnificent is what it is. And I, I would have had it like, go prove yourself and then come back. You know? Let me see your resume, sir. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like I mean, you on. know, just being dubbed the leader doesn't like you know, like like hey, let me let me be a good person now and wear a new costume. I like, mean, like you could pull apart all of the reasons why this is not realistic, but I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it, it's I think, a comic book film. I get it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and so I mean, I understand that. I'm just asking questions, and 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 you know, fucking sue me for asking a question or or, no, or pre- not at all. presenting a you know, a, an alternative way of looking at something. But, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, they could have told him, go fuck yourself. And then, and then he's not even listen to him. Like, what? Well, I think that was, go, I think go that's fuck where, where, yeah, they could, that, that would have been like, okay, I, I get it. Well, you, well if, even we like, at, if we look at Scott and Gene, that was their initial reaction that that's what they want to do. Magneto's right. here. We're peacing out. Oh, I'm yeah. not for this. So, but I think well, they were going to, I think they were going to do that before magneto yeah, made the that plan, decision the plan well, yeah, was, they're like yeah, yeah that was is, the original this, plan but when yeah. he showed up it was like this this was oh yeah this is it and no the only reason I, it, and gone. i think that's the reason why he stayed was because he's like no fuck that um i i can't do that now because <laughs> that's why this, scott this stayed news. yes but gene yes. still wanted to go yeah she still yeah. wanted to leave um i think the i think the others may have just not had the gumption so to speak to well if, if this is what Xavier i think wanted. i think logan would have any of them logan would have been like you know I would. I would think Logan either. would have been the first one to be like, "I'm done." Yeah, um, Logan didn't even like really dig the idea of Cyclops being team leader. He was like, "You know, yeah. I'm only adhering to you purely because of Charles." Like, other than that, yeah, you, I'm still gonna clown you every now and again. Well, at, at yeah. the same time, at the same time though, he, uh, you know, he changed up his whole look. He didn't. He didn't wear the helmet anymore because he says. I always felt that Charles was in my mind, and now that yep. he's not here, I don't need to wear that. And again, that's making himself vulnerable to even like Jean Grey. Jean Grey could have completely fucked with his mind, but she didn't because he's he's letting himself be open and vulnerable to, to the team. So again, it kind of shows you that like, hey, look, he is taking steps to honor what Charles Xavier wanted him to do. 
so and he's not wearing his helmet, so we could essentially have an in on like you know taking him over or controlling him in a way or getting him out of here. But you know, I think there's a level of trust that they're trying to trying to build with him, and, in, and even during the trial, you know, uh, Storm was like, "You guys go out there, uh, Magneto and I will protect everyone in here or whatever." I mean, she's literally putting her faith into a guy who's been their villain. Yeah, and, and and I think also you know when executioner comes in, fires the weapon and it hits Storm. I thought that's uh, that that whole speech was so powerful when he says, he says you know all the X Men have ever done were deeds of good with their awesome abilities, and is this is is this what they get in reward? And you see her like uh, crawling on the ground, like oh god, it was it was you know, it was pretty uh, pretty intense. Well, like even um, to your point about them gaining or like trying to trust magneto like gene makes it a point like early on in the second episode because scott's like you know i could have my wife probe your mind and she kind of look she gives him that look like um this is not uh what the fuck is his name who's working with trask uh uh the, oh, the other the other guy uh, with the glasses yeah yeah yeah. yeah. she's yeah. like this this isn't a situation where we need information this is a, a complete breach of just human rights like this mm. is not fucking okay i'm not gonna do that and magneto's even just like yeah go ahead read my mind I don't give a shit. And then Scott's just like, yeah, he'll he'll have his mind. He like totally kind of does a goalpost change a little bit. He's like, oh yeah, you know, he can have his mind read today and he'll be on our side today, but not tomorrow or the next day after that or a year from now, blah, blah, blah. Basically insinuating that no matter, no matter what happens, Magneto would never have the capability to change. Even though by the end of the episode, it's pretty fucking clear that Magneto is making avid steps to try and change. He's trying. Yeah. But I think well, I think the point Ryan might be trying to make here is, is he's coming in I'm leader because of a piece of paper of a will and that's well, yeah, just I, yeah, how it's going to be I, I get right? it. I mean, without reality, any proven without any um proven yeah no track record where, yeah, no no, no, no point no of reference of hey I just like doing yo it. hey I showed up uh, guys I changed yeah. my costume actually my gloves go all the way up to my biceps now <laughs> so. But I mean, <laughs> I think you can get away with that when it comes to animation. If it was live action, it would be like, huh? You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's the difference between live action and animation. Is that animation, you can kind of get away with that and then move forward with the story. While live action, you would definitely, I, I know I would probably definitely stop and think, wait a minute. Come again? Like, uh, how does this work? You know? I um, think in the context of live action, you'd probably have a better ch pass of trying to make this work with McKay Boy and Fassbender as opposed to Stuart McKellen. It's a little bit more viable, but even then you'd have to have it would have to be like had Fox not been bought by Disney and Fox was like, let's make a fifth X-Men movie after Dark Phoenix. What mm. do we do? Let's bring in the Shi'ar Empire and kill Charles Xavier, who takes yeah. over the X-Men. How about fucking Magneto? You know, there, there's a million different ways you could probably write it. But regardless, the fact that it's a animation b a continuation of a series that had four seasons prior it's a little bit more easier to buy that, yes, one of their most notorious antagonists is now the head of the Xavier Institute. It's a little bit more biteable. IMO. IMO. IMO, I in my opinion. Um, <laughs> Hashtag IMO. Hashtag IMO. <laughs> and Drog is um, right. Guy Rich. That, that was his name. Yeah. Guy Rich, yeah. Um, but I love the first episode, you know, going back to just looking at the entire series. Yeah. I love in the first episode, you know, it, it basically was the team coming together and just kicking a lot of ass and having a lot of epic scenes. Like, of course, I'm, we've talked about it already. The Cyclops landing scene was, I thought was fucking badass. I, I, I saw that scene and, and we talked about it over the one before I saw the show. I liked what they did before that in the warehouse when he was like using it to like back up and like yeah and that was around. really cool and it's... i was like that's fucking dope what the, the what, but when he fell out of the or didn't fall but when he jumped out of the uh, uh he didn't the, jump or, no he did he, did he was pulled out um, the x jet right when he was going down the blackbird it, it wasn't as blackbird thank you as prolific as as what he did in there because he wasn't holding his he wasn't actually controlling it he would just like you know used the beam and came out of the smoke and all that and i was like okay that's cool but i liked what awesome. he did i thought it was more it was inventive fabulous. earlier in the warehouse scene when i he was thought fighting i thought guy. that scene was badass the way he landed i was just like fuck yeah I love he was like oh just fired yes he wasn't hitting the buttons that's a little bit of a continuity issue but he just fired and used that to like break his fall and it's landed you know and then 
you know, to me, my X Men, you know, it was, it was badass. I was like, this is fucking yeah. sick. But do yeah. we do and, we really need that though? Do we really need the hell? The, yeah, we need that. No, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Because we, we've seen. I had a massive yeah. erection. I was like, yeah. <laughs> TMI. Uh, Breaking news. A, uh, Breaking like, news. <laughs> also, in the I comics, it, it might be Ultimates or otherwise. Like. <laughs> This is breaking news that you had an erection. <laughs> Scott does have a button in his thumb or glove that also lets him shoot the blast. I don't know if that's quite in the if it's apparently made in this show, but you know, probably. I don't know. I wasn't. I didn't pay that that much attention to whether or not he did the optic blast when he yeah, like, no, if he touched I, his visor when he was going down. Like I didn't care that much. It just seems to be <laughs> like, times he does it, times he doesn't. So yeah. I wonder at this point, does he really need to even be doing it? Just, hey, you got that ability, use it. Well, you know? I mean, I would think like, you know, the same thing with like, you know, when he was, you know, just wearing glasses or whatever. And that kind of yeah. got old a little bit. Like whenever he's like, piss is like, I'm going to do something. Shink! You know, his, and I was like, seriously, every time it's like, it's, it's kind of like, uh, it reminded me of that, that one, um, uh, what is it? College humor with Superman when he was like, uh, going to like, you know, uh, burn Batman. He's like, what are you going to do? You know, because he always like doesn't use his eye beams or whatever uh, or his laser vision. So it's just sort of like, dude, if you're going to use it, use it. Don't don't fucking threaten it all the time. You know, with just his eyes, all, you know, when he's, wears, when he's wearing his glasses, he's just like, shink. Like, okay, we, we get it. You've got eye well, beams. One of the uh, things that, that Sean and I had talked about was that, you know, in these first few episodes, it's been a, it hasn't been like, you know, Wolverine centric. Like in the yeah. live action films, it's like it's all about Wolverine because he's a huge yes. actor and he's very popular. Yes. So it's like you know, Wolverine, Wolverine, Wolverine. And this one, he's had a, a much smaller role than I thought he was going to have, uh, which I like because you know I like how they're focusing on on Cyclops and Jean Grey and Magneto and just other characters of the X Men. So, <clears throat> I mean, yes, you know he's why had that some probably big is scenes. right. Why? Because Cal Dodd's voice is the one that sounds the most different of them all. Like, yeah, Lenore Zan sounds almost exactly like she did as Rogue all those years ago. Um, I forget who voices Storm, but she sounds just the same, if not maybe a little bit older, and that's fine. But Cal Dodd absolutely sounds aged as a, as opposed to when he sounded younger in the initial TV show. Well, like he definitely sounds different. I think also too is that they maybe I mean, I mean we still have you know, what seven more episodes to go, but like yeah, yeah. it could also be that they don't want to overly establish Wolverine in this series because who knows? I mean the Wolverine we're going to get in Deadpool Wolverine might be way different from what we're getting here. I, I, I'm not sure. Wolverines, we could see a couple different Wolverines yeah. in that movie, allegedly. I'm still holding out hope that this is the origin of that X Men at the end of uh, the Marvels because it was kind of I mean, like. It, they it kind of it kind sense. of feels like it, right? Like like Kelsey Grammer's Beast looks like Beast from this show. He looks I mean, exactly like him. I he like, he oh, looks exactly shit. like him, right? They had Professor X, Patrick Stewart's Professor X, look just like he did in the X Men the animated series with yellow chair, green suit, and all. Um, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, pretty fucking close to the Wolverine as we've seen him in X Men the '90s. Like it, it's very very close. And even, I mean, you can make the argument about Deadpool because Deadpool's had like a handful of small cameos in the initial TV show, just as like blinking, you'll miss it moments. But still, like, there, even like I even saw today that that like Hugh Jackman is fueling fire for fucking Channing Tatum appearing as Gambit in Deadpool Wolverine. I'm like, you know, if you guys are going to make him Gambit, the only thing I ask is give him the black and red eyes. That's all I want. I want Gambit to have black and red eyes like he has had in this mm. show like he's had in X-Men Evolution, just in the comics, just give him the black and red eyes. That's all I fucking ask. I worry about with Channing Tatum, I worry about him trying to do the accent and he's it's Cajun. sounding like super fake. Like, hey, if I'm not mistaken, me. I think like, he is oh. Cajun. Still, I mean, I'm fucking Mexican and I can't pull off a fucking Spanish accent if I was an actor. Like, oh, well, I got this, you know? Fault. Well, I'm, somebody, actually, it's not my fault. It's my parents' fault. They're the ones cheeky. who didn't teach me. Because Man, they, they just won't have Channing talk. Yeah, they'll just be like, okay. <laughs> "You just need to watch American Me a few more times." Yeah, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> American Me. Um, but I mean, I it'd be interesting if Channing Tatum does make a cameo in that movie. But I mean, at this point, uh, it sounds like a bajillion people are are supposed to make a cameo. Yeah, right. It's getting the same treatment that like uh, Multiverse of Madness was getting when everyone was like, "Oh, this guy's gonna be in, and that guy's gonna be in, and this guy's gonna be in." So it's like, yeah. who really? Who the fuck well, even knows? Also, like you've, <laughs> you've got you've got Sean Levy out there being like, "Oh yeah." 
some of those are true, and it's just kind of adding more fuel to that fire, whereas Sam Raimi was kind of mum about who or who not was going to show up in Multiverse of Madness, even though it was, like, on good authority that, like, Professor Xavier and Mr. Fantastic and even, like, some variant of Captain Marvel was probably going to show up. Even Agent Carter, I think, was even, like, alluded to prior to that movie being released. But this one, you know, Jennifer Garner's Elektra. We know Pyro's coming back. Um fucking taylor swift is probably going to be in this movie as either lady deadpool or dazzler one or the other um the the list of cameos for this film are fucking endless and i would not at all be shocked to see like daniel radcliffe play like a a variant of wolverine um i don't at all buy that henry cavill is a variant of wolverine i think that's total bullshit but that's just me but the, the point is the laundry list of fucking cameos for deadpool and wolverine is endless Tom Cruise is not going to be in this movie. You're dead wrong. <laughs> uh, and this too, Axel, the MCU playing 90s theme for the X-Men and Rising of W, it's, that's completely different. This is a Way continuation different. of that same series. So yep. it's not. It'd be one thing if like, no, not even that. Because I mean, they used the John Williams theme in Superman Returns, which was a continuation of yeah, the, the was. Donner's Superman. So that yeah, made right. sense. And that's like using it in Man of Steel when it's an entirely new Superman. Kind of like, well, wait a minute, this is a new no. They iteration. used it in uh, Justice League. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Black Adam. And Black Adam. They, they used a darker version of it in Black Adam, but it was still more or less the Williams theme. It was. Um, and I mean, they used it in Multiverse of Madness. They had that very small hint of it, and then they also had it again in Miss Marvel. But again, yeah. it's just I think it's a little bit more passable because of just how iconic that 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 noise that those those sounds are with the x-men as a whole whereas with superman you can kind of reinvent and retool him no matter how many fanboys bitch and cry but yet some will still clamor and cling to the fucking john williams theme even though there are a lot of other themes for him that you can identify superman with case in point superman the animated series the fleischer cartoons man of steel the you know Donner Superman like it, even my adventures with Superman has kind of a catchy tune to it like it, well, you can you can do multiple things with it and this being a continuation you got to hit that nostalgia right, right. you got right. you got if, they, if they'd have changed the theme up completely you, your hardcore fans the fans that wanted to see that continuation they're gonna be like what what the what is this this mm -hmm. isn't this isn't a, is this really a continuation because what happened to the theme song I mean yeah. they, they they made sure they they knew what they were doing using that theme. Maybe amping it up a little bit, but still keeping it true to what we remember from, you know, yeah. 97. So. And it's and not even the same exact theme. It's it's an updated version. Exactly. Of the theme yeah. Too. Yeah. And but it's and, but you but you can easily still tie it back to 100%. the original again, make making that connection again from the nostalgia perspective. So. 100%. And, and Black Adam Jocelyn, yeah, that, that's why they didn't work. Yeah. That's why it didn't hit the way they wanted it to. Not the sole purpose, but it they didn't work. So I mean, they're bad examples of. of I, examples I argue. Of how, it worked better in Black Adam's favor. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's, a, that's a very different conversation you're having at that point, right? Yeah. Because it's not so much as like that version of Superman. It's it's more like, yeah, Superman's back. And if you're going to use a theme, if both Henry Cavill and Dwayne Johnson are like, yeah, sure, fuck it. Why not? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if I was Lauren Balf, I would have probably maybe done a, a, a hybrid of the, the Williams and, and Zimmer theme like they did for the Superman 75th short. But, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and fucking cry foul on Lauren Balfour. for it. He did a pretty solid Black Adam theme, if you ask me. But, again, I think it's, apples and oranges conversation. Yeah, I think it's one of the cases where, you know, they wanted to make sure that Henry Cavill appealed to or you know that Superman appealed to a wider audience, and they probably figured if we played uh, a take of the Hans Zimmer theme, not everyone's gonna know what that is, but everyone knows what that is. So let's go with that. You know, we'll try and to appeal really... to two different fan bases: your your yeah. your your seventy eight, and then your Henry Cavill. Right. Well, I, I mean, and you're looking at you know they were still in the midst of uh, of some of the Hamada things where you know he had Keaton coming back, and so they were like. Look, we're going to play the original theme. Okay, that's fine then. You know, uh, who knows? But they wanted to appeal to a wider audience. I get why they did it. Um, I I would have preferred them to use the, uh, the Zimmer theme, but I, I get why they did it. It wasn't, it's, it's So if this, so if this leads into, this X-Men leads into right live back. action, and then we, and we're, we're talking about potentially Daniel Radcliffe, what other variations, who do we think the long term is going to be? Because Daniel Radcliffe ain't going to be the long term Wolverine. Um, I think. 
the long-term Wolverine doesn't happen until after Secret Wars. Secret Wars, yeah. Yeah, I agree with Phil. Yeah, I, I think I, they're gonna they're gonna bleed Hugh Jackman until then. Yeah, yeah. I think that they are going to utilize as much of the Fox X Men as they can up until Secret Wars, and then Secret Wars is going to be their way of like parachuting into a more streamlined, brand new Marvel universe where they have much more liberty to recast most of their characters that they can't really use right now like iron man captain yeah. america maybe yeah. even a thor maybe even a new incredible hulk because he obviously you know ruffalo and, and hemsworth can't they, i don't know how they feel about it personally but i know that you know people age and they they cannot do this shit forever yeah. um paul rudd was even just asked like about an ant-man 4 and he's like i don't know you have to talk to kevin feige and i'm like well what is what what does ant-man even look like after secret wars right like wh what happens to that character do you still move forward with a scott lang do you still have his family or do you kind of like go ahead with the with like the entire retooling and bring it back to like maybe a bit more of a traditional status quo and like do a younger version of hank pym and that's where you start off phase seven with this you know not necessarily reimagined but like retooled marvel cinematic yeah. multiverse post secret wars like what does the marvel universe look like after secret wars and i think that when it comes to the x-men that is probably going to be where your best bet of getting everyone new recast then and, and that's not also, supposed to happen until 20 what 2027 2020 20, yeah 2027 yeah, yeah. something like it's that still yeah. a ways away but <laughs> yeah we got ways to go still yeah but still i mean i would rather them take their time to get to that point as opposed to saying like oh yeah we're gonna do it next year we're gonna reboot the whole fucking thing like wait what <sighs> i still think that there's a lot of potential and a lot of un undesirable love not undesirable but there's like a, a lot of you know unfinished business with a lot of people who were part of like the fox x-men stuff that i feel like kevin feige's smart enough to look at that a majority of that cast and be like yeah you guys maybe might not have been handed some of the best story or scripts but we can at least give you a solid send-off as far as a multiverse is concerned is is concerned but even still like I do think that, that Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds are going to be in at least until Secret Wars. After that, it's a... I don't know. I honestly don't. I guess at that point, it would kind of depend on the success of Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, but as far as Wolverine, the character specifically, I could absolutely see like a new version of that character. Deadpool, on the other hand, that's a bit of a different ballgame because that character, like the way that character operates, the way his, his powers function, he can literally kind of live forever. So if you wanted Ryan Reynolds in that role for a longer period of time, you could almost make the case that like him, uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man, whoever the, fu you know, Pedro Pascal's Reed, I'm sure is in it for, for you know, post Secret Wars, I'd have to imagine as well. Um, really, there's like only like kind of a handful of characters you could literally just carry over and some you're going to have to wind up recasting anyway, simply because of the fact that like they're they're gone. Or if they show up in Secret Wars, like Iron Man or Captain America, specifically like Robert Downey Jr. or uh, Chris Evans, the only way I could see them feasibly coming back is if they pull like like a Loki, where you yank them out of a certain point of time and then put them back in before the end of Secret Wars, and that's how you justify having them in the fucking movie. That's really the only way I could see it happening. Other than that, that's how they get fucking recast after Secret Wars. Mm-hmm but that's a whole fucking other tangent that's kind of related. well no and as you mentioned as these 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 actors and actresses get older uh, even even with ryan reynolds right i mean how much right. longer does he really want to play the character and is at yeah. some point do you just have a, a a someone standing in the suit and he's just doing the voiceover right to to keep that same feel going with that character so we'll see got three more yeah. years to go at least right well, i mean deadpool and wolverine is going to be like the you know, it's a stepping stone to secret. Wars. I mean, for the that, actual secret wars itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got we got some time before that actually even really. Well, happens. even then, like Avengers five is supposed to happen somewhere in between all of this. It's getting completely revamped. We have no idea what yeah. movie it is. I don't at all buy the fact that someone's out there saying it's going to be World War Hulk. That doesn't make any fucking no, sense. No, that makes zero sense. That I makes zero fucking sense. Like, I've heard them a few different people, and none of it makes any sense. Like, no, why, we, why would we go to that? That that doesn't at all track with anything that that's leading to Secret War. So it's like, why? Why would you even try and put that out there? That's doesn't make again. It doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. I mean, you could try and make the connection from like Captain America: Brave New World, featuring a couple different Hulk characters, sure. But no, I I just don't see how you do a fifth avengers movie and it's world war hulk and then the next one is secret wars that just doesn't fucking 
there, there's the the math just doesn't work. The movie math is not there. So I don't know. Like, what what is Avengers five leading into Secret Wars? That that is another burning question that Marvel I think is at this point. They kind of box themselves into it. Well, not really, but like you know, they're in that situation because of like real world situations regarding the actor who was Kang, and they also have to you know kind of retool and you know a little bit of course correction there given what happened all of last year between like secret invasion marvels and quantum mania all fucking just bombing outright all with all bomb. their audiences so yeah. they're in a really difficult position and i even think it's funnier that like bob Iger's out there saying oh you know we're dialing back the output of marvel content this year and it's like yeah this year you've got deadpool and then the next year you've got fantastic four captain america thunderbolts and blade but let's be real Blade's not coming Blade's out not next gonna year. Happen. Yeah, There's oh no God. fucking way. There's just no way. I don't way. think so, man. I don't think so. I mean, it, to me, it feels like it's going to be a Disney Plus show, but then again, I don't know. And, and, and where does he fit in? Right? Like, where does Blade fit in all this? Yeah, and they he... keep talking about uh, the group that, that he's a part of. Uh, Midnight Suns? Midnight Suns. Oh, it's going to be a Midnight Suns movie. Oh, dude, you can't... You have to really establish blade and they're like yeah it'll be blade it's gonna be uh doctor well, not strange only that, like, you have to re-establish blade and not do anything that is remotely close to the three movies that wesley snipes was a part of too which is well, just she, it's it's a juggling act that and, i do we yeah, even really need blade that's that question no do we really, we really don't him? i mean and, and then and and i use this as an example like here's droga saying where do the eternal shang Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat, uh, Moon Knight, and you know, <laughs> fit, fit into this. That's the problem that they made is that they they started to invest in all in too many characters to the point where it's like, where do all these characters fit in? How do they tie together? They don't. Well, they Some got shelved. These 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 characters here. I mean, where the fuck are they? We haven't seen them since. Especially Eternals. and so who cares about them? Yeah, yeah. I think there's, that's why. There's no, I mean, the only one that they've actually like you know invested anything in is is uh miss marvel and that didn't really pay off yeah i mean if you look at it you know oh yeah and there's iron heart too that they're reshooting as well and, and that one you know they're they're, they're going to finish it out because they, they had already finished filming the entire shows so they're like well fuck but at the same time it's like i mean once you get past next year's movies which is like you know the, the thunderbolts fantastic four you know and and whatever else then you start getting into uh you know, it, it looks like that's when they're going to focus more on getting, you know, a Spider-Man 4 and then the Avengers 5 film, which we still don't really know which direction they're going to go into. And or then after that, it. yeah, or who's directing it. And then after Avengers 5, you know, you, we've only heard rumors that like Thor, the next Thor movie would come out after Avengers 5 and possibly, you know, one like an Eternals or, or whatnot. And then... Um, and then you have Secret Wars, but something big has to, or some some movie has to come out that leads into Secret Wars. You can't just so have four. You Do you think Spider Man Four happens before Avengers Five? Because I think it's going to happen after Avengers Five. I think but I don't that, know. It could happen before Avengers Five. Well, I mean, they're already doing uh, Daredevil: Born Again, right. and Born Again is supposed to lead into Spider Man Four. I can't imagine them having an Avengers film without Spider-Man being involved because he's such a big character. So that's why I would think that uh, Spider-Man 4 would, would come out before Avengers 5. That would be the lead-in to Avengers. That way you reestablish Tom Holland, and then, you, and then you get him back in there with the rest of the team. Because, I mean, like if you want to say, well, nobody knows who he is, I mean, you can argue that you know Scott Lang was in the Quantum Zone when he did the spell. So maybe Scott Lang knows who he is. So like at the end of Spider-Man Four, maybe Scott Lang, you know, is the guy who makes a cameo. Well, also, it, you could make the debate that even Stephen Strange knows that that Spider-Man is still Peter Spider Parker because him and Wong mentioned like, oh yeah, remember that that spell you're not supposed to use the last time we did it. They have a recollection of using that spell. They do. So to me, they that do. was that, that, that just kind of spells out the idea. No pun intended. Like. Okay, so you now recall this spell happening and wiping everyone's memory of who Spider-Man is, so therefore you should still, on some technical level, know who Spider-Man is, to some varying degree. Unless they just know that they used the spell, but don't remember why they used it. That's very true, too. Didn't think of that. Well, yeah. and then the but. other thing, too, is that, you know, you have Doctor Strange, uh, possibly Ant-Man, Ant Scott Lang, the other um, person... Vulture. 
the vulture michael yeah. keaton's vulture michael keaton's character because when he when the when the spell happened he was in morbius land and then they brought him back after the, like they they shifted venom i mean yeah that, that, that's so true it's, but it's like it's a jumble fuck web because you know it's Sony and Marvel and they're kind of you know like... it's funny that like that could be the main reason that like you know what well, but then I don't know I mean yeah th that could easily be it or I at first I always thought that they were gonna do something to you know make contact with like Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield to make this this multiversal Avengers team and then they go oh okay well what about your spider-man we don't have a spider-man or like like we don't know who he is or whatever they go, what do you mean you don't know who he is he's Peter Parker I'm Peter Parker like, like he'd be the one who knows who he is because he knows who you know he's met him before be yeah, ironic and funny because then that would completely undo the entire ending of no way home and that's the thing too it'd be, is it'd be hilarious any, yeah. any which way you do it any which way you slice it it undoes everything that that was going to happen that they did at the end of no way home because no way home was supposed to set him out to be like uh you know this ground level spider-man which i think you can still have in spider-man 4 where he teams up with Daredevil and to take on the Kingpin. Yep. I think that'd be really cool. Like, like he's just doing his own thing. And then at the end of that movie is when you get the, you know, the, the, the teaser of Multiverse. someone knows who he is. Like, right. What? Right. Yeah. I, I mean, if you look at the track record or not even the track record, if you look like the, just the continuity of the, the, the Tom Holland, Spider-Man films, right? The first film, he's kind of teaming up with Iron Man here and there. The second film, he's with Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D., even though it's actually the scrolls. Then you get to the third film, he's like kind of on his own, but then he's met with the other Spider-Men that we all know and love over the other two decades of movies. You get to Spider-Man 4, you kind of go back to like the first movie status quo. Have him mess or not have him like team up with other notorious characters, but on the same level as him, i.e., fucking Daredevil. And people, and that's one team up that I know, I know fans have been like, yeah, make this happen. Yeah, make this happen. And even Vincent D'Onofrio has been like throwing gasoline on that fire. Like, oh yeah, I'd love to fight Spider-Man. I think a lot of people would love to see Vincent D'Onofrio's Spider-Man go, wow. Vincent <laughs> D'Onofrio. That'd be great. I know, right? I think a lot of people would love to see Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin go up against Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And I'll take it a step further. If by some chance they have a scene where it's Kingpin in prison and Peter Parker comes in and just lays waste to Kingpin and like maybe that maybe maybe Vulture tells Kingpin who Spider-Man is right and that's how he kind of gets leverage over Spider-Man in the movie in Spider-Man 4 per se and then at the end of the movie Spider-Man just whoops the fucking shit out of Kingpin like straight out of that sensation is it sensational oh man Whatever book J. Michael Straczynski did, and there was one issue where Peter Parker just beats the absolute piss out of Kingpin in prison. I would love to see that happen. But again, that's just like fanboy wishing at this point. But bottom line is, I, I think a lot of fans have waited a very long time to see Spider-Man and Daredevil like team up and yeah. fight Kingpin, and I think that's absolutely in the cards. I, with the I, way I, would it, would this be under the assumption that Daredevil also doesn't know who he is? Because then that would an issue from no he, his well, yeah, in Daredevil appearance again, in no he, way home he would right? not know who he is at this okay. point so he would just he all he would know he would just know is, it's spider-man i don't know it's spider-man spider yeah okay okay um so otherwise that's another issue we have it, it also depends on when when they actually do release uh what is it spider-man uh, 4 no, uh, they're no. never born again. Right. Because born again is supposed to lead into Spider-Man Four, supposedly. Well, so, remember, because... Daredevil: Born Again was actually supposed to come out in like spring of this year. Then the strike. Yeah, and, and that then up. they redid the whole fucking show because they were like, well, okay, that, this that is too. terrible. They, they also retooled the entire show, got new showrunners, the whole so, night. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure if I looked hard enough online, I, I could figure out you know when it's supposed to come out. But I mean, I would imagine you know next year you're going to have a whole bunch of those movies that, that they already had in pre-production anyway. So all those films are going to come out, and then the next year. I think it's going to be kind of like this year where, so now we're talking about what, 2026 is when you're going to get, you know, uh, your Spider-Man 4 movie, and then probably the following, I would think in one year, you, I wouldn't think that, but in, in some kind of you know order, it's going to go Spider-Man 4, Avengers, Avengers yep. and then something else, and then Secret Wars. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think it's, if they get rolling on Spider-Man, 
I don't think I don't think that movie goes into production at the end of the year. I, I don't give a fuck what Jeff Snyder says. No, there's it's no way not, that fucking it, it can't. The, the, be, be, no one has signed a fucking contract. Yeah. No one has gotten a director. Like none of this shit is even on paper yet. Like all they can do is is it's write a script. Speculatory all at this point. But, but all, all they can do for now is is write the script. That's right. what they can do. And so they they could get a script together, and then if anything, it would go in production. Probably next year, early next like, year, like in March or April, is when they would shoot it, right? And it wouldn't be ready until the following year, probably like that right. summer of what is that, 2026. So, and then, and then you got to ask yourself, okay, when are you going to do Avengers 5? Then Avengers 5 would be the following year because then you got to put that together, you know. You know so. I, could, I could see them moving Avengers 5 from its May date to December. I could see them, oh, yeah, Star Wars and having it come out on Christmas because I mean, yeah. <laughs> You can compete with your. I mean, that's if anything Star Wars is even going to come out. But um, well, and and right now, from what I can find, Daredevil is listed for next year, but it's also being broken up in two parts, two nine episode parts, which yeah. could span you the entire year. So anything that's supposed to happen after Daredevil may not happen until the end of twenty twenty five or sometime early twenty twenty six. Damn. And let's welcome in another panelist. He is the big, the bad. The scar giver, Brad. That's what she said. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, what's Hello. up, dude? Yes, and of course, as you can see below, unless it wasn't any clearer. <laughs> I saw that the like headline. Well, I, I saw that. It's like it's the only thing I could, I could think of at the time. So, <laughs> so Brad, what do you think of X Men '97? Have you got a chance to watch it? I know William's yeah, not I've... a big fan of it. I know William <laughs> doesn't want to talk about it, but have you got a chance to see it? But real yeah. quick though, Ryan hasn't seen episode three. I know. Oh, okay. So let's just yeah. Just I, I haven't seen them so through either. I've gone through the first two. <laughs> I've gone through the first two, and it's a, yeah. I, I think uh, the, I'm, I think I'm pretty much there with the kind of the consensus on, which is I, I, I'm I'm enjoying it a lot, especially because I didn't uh, you know as far as like Marvel animated shows at the time, I didn't follow I, I didn't follow the X Men animated series till like kind of later in its run. And it's like I, I was a little bit more into the Spider Man animated series at that age, but uh, yeah, I'm enjoying with the like like with how they position Cyclops and. Uh, like how they've uh the, the thing i've really enjoyed is like how much they've i think i'm going to mention this uh when we were uh streaming with uh, andre on friday um and this is kind of what, what a lot of the consensus seems to have been on it but i think i'm there with it is that it's really the show seems really conscious of the fact that it's it's evolving from the tone and from the template that was established with the initial series so it's it, it's cognizant of the fact that a lot of its audience is older so it's not necessarily gone darker but it has gone it has gone a bit more mature, and I, I, I do think that's, uh, yeah, that's really been to its benefit. So yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the show so far. I agree. Yeah, it's good. It's been really, really good. Um, you know, Ryan had some qualms with the show. We had to talk him off the ledge, but he's good now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, overall though, it's been very entertaining, and I think they've done a really good job. Uh, the animation really stepped up in episode three, which I won't give away where, but um, you know. There's a there's a, there's a really cool fight scene where they really did a lot with the animation and just it, it was just really cool, and uh, I, I I really really uh, enjoy it. So, X Men '97 definitely check that out. But uh, also that came out was Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Have you guys had a chance to see that? I have not. It's a, I have uh, not. Yeah, I'm probably going to see that over this weekend. Uh, uh, That's what I'm trying to try to do. Yeah, I have. That's probably I'll probably say. say oh, you have? Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I've seen it. It's weird for me because it's uh, and I think I mentioned this uh, when we were kind of discussing this also on Friday is that it, it, it harkens back a little bit to the 2016 Ghostbusters, which is that I'm not uh, I always I always say it's like I I'm a fan of the original Ghostbusters movie. It's like I you know I like I I, I generally have a, you know an affinity for that, but I don't necessarily classify Ghostbusters as one of my personal sacred cows. So and it wasn't really until I think the 2016 one that I really kind of realized just how, how kind of deep, near and dear that is to a lot of people so that's been a little bit of a learning curve for me um uh, as far as did like you like the 2016 <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying brad no no it, it was okay i, I was i was kind of night here nor there on it it was I, I was i think i'm one of the few people who's kind of just so so on it everybody's got a hot take on it one way or another is it on your shelf next to birds of prey <laughs> no it's on my shelf next to the raid wow. the raid of course <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I got that reference. Oh, okay. I, I, oh, everybody gets I, that reference. I, I understood that reference. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, 
but yeah, I'll probably be giving the new one uh, a look over this weekend. Probably maybe I'll take my nephew to see it over uh, Easter weekend. Probably, I that's I'd actually, actually one I that's that's the only one I haven't seen of the Ghostbusters movies. I have not seen the 2016 movie. It's not very good. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not good. Well, I'm not shocked Ryan didn't like it. Well, it was <laughs> it was a rehash. Okay, so Ghostbusters two is basically Ghostbusters one, just fucking told a little bit different. It's got some, you know, it's the same same setup. But oh, then, Ghostbusters t shirt. I didn't not, know. It's but not then Ghostbusters the, yeah, one. But then the 2016 two. was sort of a retelling of the exact same thing and put them like in very similar situations as the first one. And but it's just like okay, well, you know, what do we do here? And then you add, you know, Chris Hemsworth and. He's this idiot or whatever, and and he's basically <laughs> playing like the, the male version of Annie Potts character, right? Yeah, yeah was, yes, was the, but the Annie Potts was more like really, not, he, but she was more. There, there was more he's of an that much in that movie. She That's was intelligent. He was. Oh, he no, was no, intelligent. He, no, he was not intelligent. No, no, no she, she was. Annie he, Potts. Annie oh yeah, Potts. she was. Yeah, but he was yeah, a no, complete he, fucking goober. No, he's, and he's like, got the IQ of Homer like, Simpson in it. Like I, I thought he was more funny in in which another horrible movie. Which is vacation, I but I thought his under. role in that movie <laughs> to me was like, oh, he can do comedy, and then he did fucking Thor, Love and Thunder, and Thor, and also I was like, oh, okay, he can't. Do I comedy. thought he was funnier <laughs> in Ghostbusters than he was in Thor, Love and Thunder. At least in Ghostbusters, I, he's I supposed have to, to be... agree with you on that. I, I, like at least in Ghostbusters, he's supposed to be stupid. So you're yes. like, okay, I get it. You know, it's like. It's cool that it's, there's Thor and he's and he's. Being he was stupid. funnier okay, in Ragnarok cool. than Ghostbusters. Love and Thunder was like I think his worst. <laughs> oh Lord! <Any> possible horny. <laughs> um, only in in part two. So um, I no, 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 in part one, Frozen two, Empire? she was after Egon. That's right. Am I the only one who's seen Frozen Empire? I think so. I think you are, Sean. Yeah. You haven't seen it, right? I have not. Okay, yeah, I am. The, I am the only one who saw Frozen. What Empire. did you think right. about the movie? Um, but I, well, I will say I. I, I have heard and and read enough. Like I feel like I have seen it. My, my son saw it, <laughs> but yeah, go ahead, good Phil. Um, well, I don't mean this in like you know for dramatic pause or anything. I'm just trying to recollect my thoughts because uh, I saw it in Boston when I was at PAX East on Thursday. I met up with my friend Paul Mitch, Paul Mitchell's, who uh, you know we were on the vodka we're on the vodka stream mm -hmm. every now and again. And um, Paul, he's the owner. He's the owner of the shampoo yeah. brand. Go ahead. Not quite, Paul, but anyway, Paul Mitchell, um, you know? we okay, we, yeah. we saw um we saw Ghostbusters at the Alamo Draft House in Boston. This is the first time I'd ever been to an Alamo Draft House too. By the way, it was it was actually quite a very very awesome experience. Um, they're they're doing like a '90s themed like menu items. So I had a big Kahuna burger like from Pulp, Pulp Fiction, as well as a like one of the best strawberry milkshakes I've ever had. On top of the fact that I got to see the Beetlejuice trailer in front of the movie before it hit online, and it was fucking the best yeah, surprise i've had in yeah. a long time that was great anyway getting to ghostbusters frozen empire i really liked afterlife but i'm also kind of like brad in that ghostbusters is not like my, my one of my sacred cow franchises that i hold near and dear to my heart it's one of those oh yeah that that was fun like i don't necessarily hate or think any of the movies are bad even though i haven't seen the 2016 movie but of the four that feature the main cast you know i i think the first one is probably the, the the one I'd watch more over two, and that's not a slight to two, but even still, like I I love Afterlife and what it does for the franchise because you know it honors you know uh, Harold Ramis's character Egon in a lot of ways. You have you know the, the new cast kind of coming, and even though I I can't stand Finn Wolfhard, I think he's just a terrible actor and he's like just worthless in this movie too. But I think Frozen Empire. If you're a fan of Ghostbusters, and I mean a huge fan of like, you know, the entirety of it, like the movies, the animated show, the foot, if you had like the toys and shit, this movie will appeal to you on the Ghostbusters fan level in that regard, because Afterlife appeals to you in the nostalgic, here are my favorite characters regard. But Frozen Empire definitely plays like an episode of the animated series and also kind of opens the world up even more. And I think it did a very good job of doing that. I Ooh. also did think that the villain, I've, I've seen a lot of people say it's like, you know, not well done or too one dimensional. And, I, and I'm just like, this is a fucking ghost who freezes people. <laughs> we knew this from the trailer. How deep of a fucking villain were you really expecting from this? I don't understand the need to like be hypercritical 
of a thing that has been permanent from this whole franchise since fucking Gozer. Like, come on. What are we really complaining about here? Well, and, and, and Ghostbusters is like, I mean, you're talking about a universe in which ghosts look like like little cre- like weird creatures flying right. around, like <laughs> a Slimer, yeah, it's like, it looks uh, Slimer, yeah. yeah. So, but which you know, animated series are you referring to? The original or the the one that they tried to do in the late '90s? Original, okay. the the real Ghostbusters. The real, the, thank you. The yeah, real, I just want to make sure because there's the real. Yeah, I had those tools. Logo marching along. Yeah. To the, the, the theme. <laughs> And then the they had the that, gorilla. They did one season. Of, no, like, that's that's, that's a different Ghostbusters. No, no. Yeah, no. I, one, the one with the gorilla. I was like, what I I, en- this? I enjoyed the movie, but again, I'm I'm a little biased in that one. I don't like Finn Wolfhard. I think he, he's not only just not a good actor. I think his character Trevor is just outright useless most of the time. Um, I did like. I do like that that the director and even um, right Jason Reitman like they've referred to this new era of Ghostbusters as the. Excuse me. That's great, Matt. It's it's referred to as the Phoebe Spangler saga. And I'm like, oh, yeah, she's a great character. Like, what they do with her in the movie is actually really fucking cool. But since no one else here has seen it, I really won't dive too deep into that. But it's more or less, it's a learning lesson for her in a, in a very teenage kind of way. That's great, Matt. And that's great. Whoever keeps pulling up this fucking <laughs> comment. Like, I, I, oh, I, you I, pulled I, it up? I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, cool. Main, main villain is weak. Give me something more palpable to talk about. Anyway. Hey, sex is Ryan. Yes, something else we're, we're well aware of. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought Ghostbusters Frozen Empire was a very nice second entry into this franchise. Like, it's a solid movie. I don't understand why critics are being hyperbolic. I don't understand. Why, you know, some fans are, like, running at the, the fucking mic just to, like, try and tear this one down of, like, oh, this isn't my Ghostbusters. Get the fuck out of here. This is a franchise about fucking stopping ghosts and paranormal and friends and family getting together. And that's ultimately what this movie's about. And I will also say that Camille Nanjiani has a really fun um, additional part in this movie. Of, sorry, supporting character. There we go. Well, so, oh, so fuck, excuse me. As someone who has seen it, does it have anywhere else to go? Because so far, this, this it hasn't even made back its budget yet. Yeah, um, the last one when it came out, it was like a hit. Everybody was like, "Holy yeah. shit!" It was in the vein of like Top Gun Maverick. Kind of weird like, though. Wow. Was like, I mean, like, nobody knows that it was like I didn't really know when it was coming out. I knew it was coming out soon. I think I didn't know it came out this past weekend. I was like, the fuck? I think if this movie has a hindrance, it's definitely its release date because, as we all know, Godzilla X Kong comes out this Friday or yeah, this tomorrow. Thursday rather. Tomorrow, pretty much. Yeah, and tomorrow. that's that. Yeah, tomorrow, like that's literally going to chop its legs off at the box office. Um, but I will also say the film has a hundred million dollar budget, doesn't really have that much to worry about. Yeah. And on top of that, you factor in, you know, <laughs> merchandising sales, you factor in its inevitable lead to streaming. I mean and look, even the even the directors have said like we're, we're working on an animated show, like another animated show. Oh, I think I think I think they're in it for like <laughs> Sure. I think I think they're in it for the long haul. I I, I absolutely see at yeah. least one more movie happening, regardless of how much money this one makes back in its entire box office run. Yeah, and in that trying to make an expanded say universe. no more of the original cast. I, also, to answer your question, yes, I think by the end of the movie they do establish the fact that you can do more in this world. Okay, okay. and that's what I was hoping for was that. You know, at the end of the film, you're like, oh, yeah, there's definitely gonna be a part three or did it end where you're like, it ends in a way shelving this this franchise for a little while. It it ends in a way not so much as like, you know, how the first movie had a post credit scene where they allude to the firehouse. There's a mid credit scene in this movie. I won't say what it is, but I will just say that the end of the movie absolutely opens up the possibility of them having to continue on with with their endeavors. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, sounds good. It's a, it was it was a fun time. I enjoyed myself, and I'm not even like a super huge Ghostbusters fan. Yeah, again, that's kind of that's, that's kind of where news. I was sort of falling on. That's it. good it's news. Like it, it's, um, no, it is. I I, I wouldn't. No, I mean, I, I casual, still see it. but yeah, that's but I get having a especially since having a nephew, you know, with a you know uh, going to be turning eleven in uh, July. So you know, you. You, you kind of you kind of weigh that a little bit uh, on these things too, where it's like, oh, this is something I could take like, my nephew or my, or my kid to, even though I don't have kids. So you know, that's been kind of a thing where it's, it, it was. I don't know if I've been consciously thinking that, but it's kind of the thought. It's like, oh, it's like if I'm going to see this theatrically, this is something he'd probably be interested in too. So it's like I probably kind of kill two birds with one stone on that. And by the way, uh, this is this is kind of a <clears throat> uh, this is a slight non sequitur maybe, but it does relate to Ghostbusters. 
Uh, but I don't know if anybody's been seeing on social media that one picture of Ernie Hudson's kind of circulating around where he's at a con or something, and everybody's pointing out that he's 78 and he looks like he's about maybe mid 40s. So, yeah, he looks good for yeah, his age. I've seen that picture. He's aging well. Well, no, he's aging. And that was the thing that bothered me. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that was one thing that bothered me about the 2016 <sighs> movie was that like they brought back Ernie, Ernie Hudson, but he has an entirely different role. He was they, they all weren't do, even right? they all had none of them are the original characters. They were just like they just cameo as other characters in the movie. It was like what the fuck? Oh, you talking about Ghostbusters 2016? Yeah, yeah I, I know about the cameos. Stupid like, idea. Like, like Girl Ackroyd, Busters. Murray, and Ernie Hudson. They all have like cameos as completely different people that aren't Vinkman. Uh, Zed Moore yeah, there's and, um, other people. Yeah, it really yeah, does. Completely it, different people. In hindsight, I mean, it does kind of look back on that one. I mean, it's like it really does. I mean, this kind of goes to you know Williams, uh, you know, Mr. William Powell, of course, the Sci-Fi Center, and, uh, is, you know, the we your infamous you know, co-host. But, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> it, it kind of goes to what, uh, his point that he always makes about you know, reboots, you know, predominantly fail and. I think that kind of that maybe is kind of like a poster child of that because looking back on it and with what they've done with the subsequent Ghostbusters movies, you know that really could have I think that almost could have worked better as like a legacy sequel because I mean there there really is nothing maybe. intrinsically where it's like if you 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 could have changed maybe like two or three elements to the 2016 one it's like it could have been like basically like the third movie where it's like now they're just bringing in a new team these guys are kind of mentoring them. I mean that's essentially what what Frozen Empire more or less seeks yeah, out to yeah. accomplish like they have the legacy characters in ways mentoring the new the new cast so it it i think it i think it, it it accomplished what it needed to do regardless of some some minor nitpicks i might have had but i gotcha. i don't agree that the main villain was weak i think that's that's a little overblown <laughs> i mean because again <laughs> we're asking if sigourney <laughs> weaver is back and he's asking and uh, slump slightly different terminology than i no to put here no she wasn't you get a lot of vinkman <laughs> but you don't get sigourney weaver i'll say that she's not in at all well not not a lot of vinkman he's actually the one of the original three you see the least any pots is in it though she's, she's great you see her yeah. suit up one of my, one like, of my favorite like jokes show. one of my favorite jokes in the original is when um when vinkman shows up in her apartment she and she's got she's had her encounter with a uh, with uh, with Gozer, he says, "Are you the key master?" He says, "Not that I'm aware of." Slams the door, opens it again. "Are you the key master?" "Yeah, I'm a friend of his. He, he told me to stop by." <laughs> that's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite. I always is Rick Moranis in the movie. No. no, no, no. That would have been great. I... Yeah, that's that's he... the one I would love to see happen. In the, I know he in retired from moment. acting, but still, that he would did. be great. Yeah, the, well, he, uh... he doesn't put it that way. He says he's just ex exceptionally selective these days. Yeah, that, that's pretty yeah. Cool. Yeah. I got turned into a dog, and they helped me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Lewis. That was short and pointless. I would love it's, to see Sigourney Weaver come back Jesus. for like a larger yeah. part in, in a third film, but you know, I I don't know. Uh, Paul shot the idea of like we haven't seen, and I don't remember if if they established this in Afterlife, but um, Trevor and Phoebe's father, like, is is. Carrie's Car Carrie Coon's character, Callie, is she divorced or did her husband die too? I don't remember in Afterlife if they ever established that or not. If she was just like a widowed mom or just a single mom. I, I think she was a single mom. Okay. Because if so, she was widowed, it'd be like, oh, let's find the ghost of your dad. So yeah, I think they just made no. it to where it was like, yeah. Because her it's... dad was Spangler, like Egon Spangler. We all know what clearly what happened with him. But like Paul shot the idea of like, oh, they should get Bill Hader to play their dad. Because you could have Paul Rudd and Bill Hader just fucking riff off each other in a third movie, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I could see that. I could see them bringing, but yeah, bringing or introducing the the dad in that in that right. uh, that part." But um, <clears throat> I mean, I hope they do make another one because I mean, I like Ghostbusters. Uh, I'm definitely gonna check this one out. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I thought Afterlife was really good, and uh, you know, I loved that they used the old music they use in the first two films that to me that was key as well oh yeah how was the music in this one like i said i'm not a huge ghostbusters fan so i couldn't even tell you if like the the music was like superbly on point i will say that there is a really great nod to the original song with um whoever created the original rap like there's there's a music video with them all in it in the movie yeah uh there's, there's, junior there's... what's his name yeah yeah freddie prince jr no, Ray Ray Parker Jr. Ray Parker no, Jr. Yeah, there there's a music video with the original cast and Ray Parker Jr. Wasn't Ray Parker the guy who did? Uh, oh no, Ray Park. 
did. Uh, you know, he's like he's like advertising all over the place that he's going to be at some con. I'm like, I don't think anybody wants to see you, dude. <laughs> Oof. I can twirl around a stick real good. Mm. Wild. But yeah, it, it was a fun time. I, I enjoyed myself. Was that my Ray Parker, Ray Parker Jr.? Who, who Ray are you Parker talking Jr. about, Brian? What? Who, who's Parker advertising Jr. that they're going to be at, oh, at Ray, a con? Oh, Ray Park. Ray oh, Park. really? Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Are you drawing right now? What are you doing? Uh, you're looking yeah. down your your drawing pad. <laughs> Either that or you're staring at your hands. These hands. These hands look so strong. <laughs> oh, Never no. any story. He's debating if he should be a hand model. I tried to save them. <laughs> but, but, but this I, I, through my, my fingers. I'm wondering how much of my bed for the spoilers. But, uh, the racing again, snail. My, <laughs> Because my, because my, <laughs> the, the, the guy the, reminds me of you, though. The the, 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 the most Mister I always kind of inquire the most about is uh, is Winston and kind of like what his because uh, he's. He was always my favorite Ghostbuster because he was the he was the, the, bat. the guy off the street. He was the guy who's like the voice of common sense. Where it's like, yeah. has, it, has it ever occurred to you? It's like we've been so busy because the dead have it rising from the grave. So. um uh, he, he, I've always had the, as far as like each of the individual Ghostbusters, he's actually kind of been the guys sort of related to the most. So yeah, again, maybe <laughs> uh, avoiding spoilers, like what's kind of his uh, presence or his uh, role in a, in a Frozen Empire? Um, without spoiling it, I th I think to your point of him being the person on the ground and and like kind of grounding everyone, he does do that, but he also oversees a lot of what transpires both within the firehouse and in another undisclosed location like they, okay. they when i say they expand on the world they they literally expand on it, it, on the empire that is the ghostbusters like like zed Moore is very oh. much the the bank roller in in that respect and he okay he does he does his best um him and ray they get a lot of time together as opposed to vinkman like vinkman still in there he's in the world and he's still very much the scientist and he's still kind of creating stuff but ray and zed Moore absolutely have much more screen time together than all three of them do okay i'll just look okay, at yeah. that yeah well and like but, what you described that, that kind of sounds like uh it's almost like that sounds like something the kind of like the progression right. of what he would do There's... because of course he, when he comes in <laughs> seriously guys <laughs> hell <laughs> Like, there's a point in the movie where Ray and Zed Moore are having like a very serious conversation, and Ray, in like to to your point, he kind of has to bring Ray back to reality a little bit and kind of reminds him like, hey, you know, we're getting up here in age. Like, is this really how we want to spend our time? And Ray kind of gives him like, yeah, dude, this is exactly how I want to spend my time. Like, he's the one trying to remind the group of like, yeah, we are, we, we were once this, but now we are this. And Ray has like the perfect response to that. And like, yes, but I still want to do this. It's it's very much like you see their relationship evolve in, in a certain respect, but you also see like where they are as characters. It, it, well, I don't really well, want to like, get into it because it's, it's very I got spoiler. You, I got you. Well, it's good to hear, but it's good to hear that that, that, character as brad put it, where he's keeping them grounded is still there like they yeah. that, that's still much part of the character well, that, that we remember from the yeah, was, from the older films so yeah that was the way i always I looked at winston was that yeah. he was uh because again he walks in it's like is there if there's a page it's like he's got i need a job if there's a paycheck in this i'll believe whatever you tell me uh so he you know you that was always the, the thing i really loved about the original was he had the dichotomy of like the three scientists who they're, they're really yeah. into <laughs> really experts on all the paranormal stuff and he's the guy who's he was just yeah, but they're all they're again they're they're kind of socially awkward they they're they're sort of also kind of they're all kind of just so wrapped up in the in the data of it uh and in the uh in the minutia of it that you know a lot of stuff can you know kind of flies over their heads as far as just like common sense and you know and uh, winston was the guy who was like really and he's the one who picks up and says hey we've been so busy you think maybe because the dead have been rising from the grave yeah so yeah. that was that was kind of his role was almost to be like almost like the humans he was the every word to the ghost yeah yeah and that's uh, he was the one because they were scientists, so he was the one that they used so that the audience could connect and understand like what the fuck is going on from a just just average Joe perspective. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's that's his role in the, in in Frozen Empire. He he, he you right. know he bankrolls a lot of the operation now. Well, but yeah, it's 
He does so, keep everyone on the ground. That's it'll be interesting to see, though, right. where they go next, whether that's animated series or another film. So I'll, I'll be interested to see where they go next. It's, it's I wonder I think if, Ghostbusters. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I wonder if the new animated series that they're doing with Netflix will be a direct tie-in to Ta- yeah, like a, whatever they're doing now. Yeah. It makes sense that they did, yeah. and then wrap it. Maybe they say, hey, we're going to wrap this up and kind of you know, put this on the shelf for a bit and wrap it up with the final film. Yeah. And say, hey, we're going to put Ghostbusters on the shelf for, you know, I think, a little I bit. I think Aykroyd, and he's always been vocal about, you know, trying to create a universe, you know, a shared, connected. Yeah, you know, because multi- he was chasing after multiverse, but universe, with that he, he wants to years. go through. Yeah. <laughs> and so they, they want to continue with like video games and movies and television, all kinds of shit. He just wants to franchise the fuck out of it before, I guess, before he croaks. I was was watching a video. I was watching a video while I was in Boston, and essentially, Ghostbusters is more or less the brainchild of Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. Like, and Ivan Martin did like bankroll it, produce it, and direct it. Yeah, but but more or less, like Ghostbusters is is his baby. Like he he has a very near and dear connection to to the film and the the franchise as a whole. But yeah, like I, I. I was actually, you know what? I'm going to shut up because I don't want to spoil anything. But yeah, <laughs> Ray has a great part in the movie. I'll just say that. Akron's character. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to taking my nephew to it this weekend then. Yarp. Yeah. <laughs> time. I'd give it a four out of five stars. No, actually, kind of a, n- another, another kind of slight, sort of related, but, but I, I mentioned this uh you know, a couple of our streams, I think, with uh, one when we had Andre on on Friday, because um, it's weird now we're getting like kind of Ghostbusters finally kind of coming back into prominence. And you know, for the longest time, I always kind of looked at, uh, and it's fitting because Ivan Reitman was also director, was uh, you know, Evolution for 2001. That, that for my money for that time, that was basically essentially the, the equivalent to Ghostbusters three because it really is Ghostbusters aliens. Very true, and even and they even got Ackroyd in on that, which was uh, and William hates that movie as he pointed out. It's like, ah, come on, man, <laughs> it's hilarious. Well, the game itself, like the Ghostbusters game, that was yeah, almost yeah. like a part a part three. Yeah, I, I, I hear people uh, say that it came out in 09, I think, in 09 or 2010. <laughs> yeah. See, did you guys see this? Oh Evolution my god! Somewhere in there, yeah. You guys check this yeah. out. So, uh, Aaron Bailey. <laughs> Oh, I think I did see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw that. <laughs> this is the original one he did that that went viral, right? Even though he just pieced it together, uh, then he did this one went Blue viral. Everyone was like, "Oh, he was not there, there. no!" And, and then that, now he then, did this one, and James Gunn so put it in a not story. Anything like what Gunn looks like? <laughs> no. And but James, James Gunn, Gunn posted it. this on his story. I was like, "Oh no!" You know, I feel really bad because every time Aaron does this, people have to crop his watermark out, and it's just like, give credit where credit is due. Yeah, I, I, so, so and he even up. says, "Well, add this new one to the list." <laughs> and so, if we look at, uh, oh shit, I hit the wrong button. Um, <laughs> so if you look at his Instagram, let me see. <clears throat> so this is James Gunn's Instagram. There it is. Yep. <laughs> He's like, what? Right. Again, but again, the people, the people thought. I mean, Guns just happens to punch here in that. But I mean, the, the fact that, that people thought that was real, they <laughs> thought it was real. Yeah, it was like, oh, thought it was real. <laughs> it's so bad, dude. It's so bad. Yeah, but with art in here, for God's sakes. But I mean, uh, since we're talking about, you know, uh, we're talking about Ghostbusters, and then you mentioned that uh, Godzilla and Kong movies coming out. Uh-huh. Uh, the, what tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow. Um, um, with the uh, you know, Gauntlet, he's gonna snap away half of all life. You know, universe, I just, I guess. <laughs> it, it's like it's going the way of Transformers and and and, and the Fast movies. Like it's just like I, I really don't want it to get too wacky, but I think it's going to. I think they're going to continue to push the limit of how yeah. how outrageous they can wait, get. Wait, 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 hold on. Do you recall in in the Showa era where where Godzilla literally flies through the fucking air to kick his enemies yeah, in your ear? Talking about like how. <laughs> Yeah, I know. But, Come on, but, man. Well, that's like saying, like, well, like you know, in Batman, he ran around with a bomb on his head and you know, he was trying to get rid of it, you know, which is a great scene. I love that scene, by the way. Oh, <laughs> but but still, it's like, I would rather see Godzilla versus Kong be taken, like, more seriously, like, like they're actual creatures, kind of like how they were in, you know, King of the Monsters and... Uh, was Skull it? Island. Yeah, Skull Island, Gareth Edwards, uh, Godzilla. Sure. Yeah, but Gareth Edwards was, like, they're, completely they're, taking it serious. But they're com- they're really trying to move away from that, and now they're just like, 
let's just get these movies out there so they're fun, they're action packed, and you can turn your brain off and drink your Pepsi, and eat your popcorn. Well, didn't you watch Monarch? You watched Monarch, didn't you? I watched most yeah. of Monarch, and then I okay. fell behind. Monarch definitely takes it back to that era of of the kaiju verse it, it very much takes it back yeah. to we, we can take this stuff seriously but then you get to like godzilla vs kong and i also think this is kind of like inherent with the director too like you have adam wingard coming back to direct godzilla x kong and it's like okay well how do we follow up godzilla vs kong oh well let's just have them team up fuck okay how how and why oh let's just have them fight another giant ape and another giant lizard fuck okay how <laughs> well we gotta give we gotta give kong a gauntlet fuck why how because giant monster gauntlet yeah like, I, I don't i don't i don't know like i i feel like how do I, we make the monkey snap i feel well, like the, there, that's that, he has that for a reason because the the, yeah, the he, ape that they're fighting he actually yeah. has like the spine of a another and he flings it at kong yeah wraps yeah. it around his wrist and then yank pulls it and it totally shreds well, also, his, his his uh wrist and his hand up which is why point. then they give him that gauntlet. There's I also know, a point in the know. trailer where, where Kong's the same hand is like getting frozen, presumably yep. by Shimu, the other lizard. Man, kaiju. his hand takes a beating in this movie. He's like, oh, this hand. Well, I need. A, I need. Yeah, a, he's like, I cannot have more fun with this hand. You know what it's, it I mean, at some like... point, these are just going to be. I mean, that they're. I think they're really just aiming for. Hey, we need a summer blockbuster. We need to make yeah, some money. It, it, Kids are out of is. school. We we know we're going to make some money back on this. Let's the, just what? let's just put it out there. The right. gauntlet he's wearing, too. but the gauntlet he's wearing, it looks like. Remember in 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 uh, Age of Ultron when it he was in the, the uh, gauntlet. What, what do you call it? He was in the uh, the, uh, the Hulkbuster suit. And he was yeah. like, go to sleep, go to sleep. Like, oh yeah, with I feel the, like the it's going to do that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, see, here, here's the thing with it too. <sighs> I, I've kind of it, this is kind of a theory I've been developing, or maybe uh -oh. not a theory, but maybe like a. a Way I'm, the way I'm sort of interpreting it, because yeah, you could definitely sense that the uh, the tone, it, like it's from 2014 Godzilla to now, like it started out with the kind of the grittier tone, and now it's kind of moved into more kind of a you know a little bit more kid friendly, a little bit more crowd pleasing. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I think uh, a little I, more I, gives I, a I, fuck. Like let's just have a good time. Well, I think <laughs> that, here's what it is this is what they're doing with the monster verse as far as tone, as far as the uh, kind of popcorn nature of what, what it's going to. This is basically what they tried to do with DC without like having like a Justice League in the middle of it. Absolutely, it, it, it's, it's, Absolutely. So it's like if it, if that happened, but you didn't have like a movie a movie that just cratered everything in the middle of it, and then just left it, it left the whole world and fan base pissed off. It's like if you just if you just progressed that to that tone naturally, this is kind of what this that is. It went from this, like it went from this. <laughs> To this, oh, that's you know what I mean? Where you're like, oh, no, what's I'm happening? I'm not sure I quite agree with that. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? saying like, harsh. It I understand dark, what you're saying. Yes, it, was, it went from dark and gritty to more like uh, upbeat, special effects, action heavy. Like, I, I would have gone like what not you just corny, there. but it's just action heavy. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, I, fuck it. Well, well, like what you went with there, it's like I I, I get what you're saying, but it's like I would have gone with the second clip. I would have gone with like one out of like Aquaman or Shazam. That's probably more what I would yeah, have gone with. Definitely, and I feel like you know the 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 first three films like Godzilla, Kong Skull Island, and then Godzilla King of the Monsters. You had three directors there with very distinct ideas of what mm -hmm. they wanted to do for their movies, and then Adam Wingard comes in and goes, "I'm just going to make Godzilla and Kong fight," and then the next one comes, he's like, "I'm going to make them fight together." It's like okay if that's your vision that's i guess what we're getting and that's fine like godzilla How? versus kong there was like hey not only are they gonna fight they're gonna have a huge fight on top of a fucking aircraft carrier what yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's that well, and, then, and then of course and then it's gonna be kaiju bvs which, which is why i say it's because it's gonna they're gonna start fighting and they team up against another villain Oh, it totally was. Like, when they were fighting, well, yeah. I mean, he alluded to it the entire time. So I was like, okay, so this is BVS, you know, so they're going like, to team up. I would up, have and they really, did. really, as a Godzilla fan, I would have totally preferred to see Godzilla fight Mecha Godzilla on his own terms as opposed yeah. to, like, having to team up with Kong yeah. to take it out. I was like, okay, yeah, we get it. You can fucking whoop Kong's ass. But the fact that Mecha Godzilla can come in and kind of whoop your ass, I was like, well, he was already hurt. True. But still, I'm just like, <laughs> I would have much preferred to see this in another Godzilla co solo movie. Like, but oh well, you know, I, 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 it is what it is. I'm not gonna fucking sit there and 
Boo, Adam I, Wingard. That's just, that's just not my style. I think part of it is also that, um, as far as like the uh, the tone shift being kind of standing out more is with the monster versus that is is the fact that we had Godzilla minus one, you know, just a couple of months ago, and that's very that's yeah. that's maybe like the you know the most seriously I think any movie has really ever taken Godzilla. You know what? I mean, it's like it's it's like going from the Batman to the Flash. <laughs> okay. I mean, and, 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 and look at it this way. You have Godzilla minus one and the Batman, right? You have very serious takes on the characters, very dark and ominous and very real takes on the characters. And then you get to Godzilla X Kong and the Flash, where you have a Batman who's whimsical and jokey and a little lighter. And depending on which version of Batman you're talking about, it's, it's and, and still also in Michael the same fucking ballpark. There. Yeah, we know. And then you get to like Godzilla <laughs> X Kong. And what is, what is Godzilla? He's fucking running around. He's got pink power now, and he's you know Super Saiyan Black, whatever the fuck it is. It's, he's got a pink power up now, and it's so. Great. I, I mean, if you want to look at, at at the whole Godzilla, the monster verse. I mean, when you, uh, I haven't seen it yet, and I want to, but like when you look at uh, Godzilla, God, Godzilla, Godzilla minus <laughs> one. Uh, that's like that's like the the Zack Snyder verse, and then you got everything else. You know, what I mean, like ah, robotic arms, let's go. <laughs> but I want to see minus one, and, and Ryan, I, and I think Phil's seen it too. I think. Yeah, I've yeah. Seen you said it, it was. Yeah. You said you it was really good, right? Oh, dude! Oh yeah, it's awesome. fantastic. It's no, good, it's minus great. minus one. And let, and I, I want to though. Yeah, I would definitely want to see it. Oh, it's and fan, again, it's, it's like fantastic. the best atomic breath I have ever seen from Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the yeah. only the only issue I ever had with it was that when he was just sitting on top of the water, it was like, wait, he's waiting. It's kind of silly. Are you are you saying he swam like a duck? Probably <laughs> his feet <laughs> were probably kicking under the water, you know, just kind of <laughs> treading water. I was like, how the fuck? I, I will like, say for minus one, deep. <laughs> for minus one, I hope we see a, a, a make the uh, Criterion collection from a physical release if we ever I get a physical so. release. I hope so. They always seem to nail. Um, their content from a Blu-ray or 4K perspective, and I think but, I that mean, one would definitely benefit very well from that type of format. Absolutely. There's a lot of cool scenes, though, like uh, in all these movies. I mean, King of the Monsters has some badass scenes. When that one guy, one monster comes out of that <laughs> volcano and just shreds that fucking city apart and then takes Rodan. on the jets. Yeah. yeah, that was badass. And then uh, in Gareth Edwards' Godzilla that shot where all the all the ships are following Godzilla in the as Godzilla is swimming in the ocean, that was yeah. a badass shot. Like a bird's eye view, I was like, dude, this is sick. Or like oh, Kong that's... Skull Island, where he's munching down on on, on the octopus creature, and it, after he just yeah. kind of pairs it apart, it's it's fucking. He starts eating it. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's yeah, fuck yeah. I think each <laughs> one so far has served their purpose. It's just don't go too far down the rabbit hole. Of, well, that's my point. Whimsical, right? Yeah. So, right. Like, like, don't get so stupid. Where, like, the next one, you know, King Kong has a fucking tank. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, he's driving around. Like, <laughs> or the next one's like, one's, oh, like they're, they're, wow. they're, they're, they're in a, like they're, they, they find themselves fighting like Dominic Toretto or something, which could totally bot, probably happen now. Hey, oh, it's all about family. Reason, it's all about family. Guys. No, oh no, oh, no. <laughs> what would make this really stupid? Always about family. It, it, it's two things. One. If they found a way to make them travel back in time to fight somebody else, so time travel or two would be if they had to take Godzilla and King Kong and put them on a ship and take them to another planet to go fight another monster on a different planet. Well, that's that's where I see the next one going. Like, oh no, oh, they're I gonna like tranquilize that. them and put them on a ship, like, and then they're gonna go fight a monster on a different planet. Like, there oh, you my go. God. You gotta get Space Godzilla in there somehow. That's it, man. Or That's even uh, what's what's the other one? Um, Gigan. I would love to see Godzilla and Kong oh, yeah, fight yeah. at base Gigan. Because they did say Ghidorah wasn't even from Earth. Like they, they, that's yeah. why they called it Monster Zero because he did not originate from Earth. So I'm like, oh, okay, can we get more monsters like that? Well, from in, the sky, in my, please. In, in minus one, is there another monster, or is it just him? Nope, it's, it's just, just Godzilla. Him. It's just Godzilla, and he's just and, fucking and, shit and up. And he's like, it, it is Godzilla who doesn't care. It's Godzilla. Yeah, like, I'm, I, I roast a whole city in the ground and smile about it. Godzilla. Yeah. So, th so, th so this is the opposite of the the no kill world Batman. This is the oh, Godzilla that no. kills. This, this, that this wants is, to this kill everybody. Like the, there you go. No, this is the no not kill world Batman. No, no, yeah. no. The Godzilla just doesn't use guns. 
No, Godzilla looks at you trying to shoot him, and he fires his atomic breath right back at you. If not, just yeah. kick you into the water and just let you survive. It, it, maybe. Because Ryan, you were saying when he charges up and, and the spikes stick out, you yeah. said like it was cool though, right? Like it, oh, it, it, it's oh, yeah. visually it looks amazing. It's yeah. like it's not for, it, it's not for people like... on the ground in front of it. <laughs> It just gives you a good indication. Oh, like, oh, okay, now it's time for us to move. Yeah, I, I, I give you a 10 second on. head start. Not, that's going to help <laughs> yeah. you much at all. Yeah. But... He's like, um... <laughs> he's charging like, up. <laughs> yeah, he's fired. Hopefully, he doesn't have flatulence. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Uh, I guess it's the end of the movie, so maybe we shouldn't talk about it. But you were saying that they were trying to time something to, to hit Godzilla oh, with something. Oh, and it was just oh, like, okay, oh, okay. come on. So the timing uh, of it was just like, okay, all these things are going on in this short amount of time, you know, and it's even in slow-mo. And it's like, okay, I can I can, I can, can give you a little bit, but I can't give you a lot. It's like, there's just too much going on for it to be that short of a period of time for him to just power up and for the, the you know people around him to do all this crazy shit. And it's like, okay, that's... You're stretching it, man. You had me until then. But, um, I mean, overall, I mean, minus that, dude. Minus that. Um, it's, 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 it's a good movie. It's a good watch. Yeah. And, and again, I think I, that because of the fact that we just saw Godzilla minus one and, the, and that became as acclaimed as it was, it just the contrast and tone, because it, it's even darker than, you know, the, what the, the monster first started out as. I mean, it, it's the, about the darkest Godzilla movie I think we've ever seen. And so seeing like within the span of like four months or so. You didn't so, see the Matthew Broderick movie? Yeah, I did. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's, it's just the darkest one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some some dark times. Times. that's what that is. Listen, okay, if you're not watch the animated series, the fall because that, that's actually pretty awesome that, that they followed up the '98 Godzilla with. I used to, I remember the uh, it was they had a video game with that Godzilla. Uh, yeah. uh, this uh, was fun. Uh, I had that on Game Boy. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, I had that on Game Boy. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that because because we just saw minus one and the tone is such a contrast of where they're taking the monster verse now. That it just it just makes kind of like the you know, just the popcorn crowd pleaser, kid friendly, just spectacle aspect of a uh, of, of Godzilla X Kong. Uh, it just makes it stand out that much more. And maybe it maybe hits a lot harder because we just saw, you know, a Godzilla who is absolutely merciless, who just is taking no prisoners. Who again, you fire one bullet at him, he goes literally to the nuclear option. And you yep. know, we're seeing that a, a few months later, it's it's a Godzilla who is outright heroic and teaming up with another kaiju. So yeah. that that makes the make that makes the tone shift that the monster versus taken. Just that, just stand out that much more prominent now because we just saw a Godzilla who is it was outright it was probably the most villainous I think we've ever seen. Yeah, that's that's certainly a, a way you can look at it. I mean, you have you know two very different, different, radically different portrayals of the character. I kind of look at it as more like you have you know two ends of the same spectrum. Like you can have yeah. a Godzilla that is very much the antagonist, very much the darker just merciless no kill rule type of godzilla <laughs> and then you've got like the show and era godzilla where he's just fighting other kaijus and he's kind of a hero and like we're gonna team up up with kong and they're, they're gonna fight you know the evil versions of themselves for this team up movie and it's like that's why it's called the new empire and it's like we have, okay. we have an og godzilla and a hollywood godzilla there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but pretty I mean, soon he's and, he's gonna be swinging his tail like boots from Sonic <laughs> to fly around. Listen, listen, I as far as like t having them fight other, it's like as far as if I other kaiju like for where the monster risk could go. I mean, I, I, uh, there's all kinds of you know ones I would you know vote for for whether they're one. Definitely. But no, I, I, I've never, always wanted to never, see. Um, I'm sorry. I've, I've always wanted to see Godzilla or King Kong or both versus. Fucking um, Ultraman! I've always wanted to see <laughs> against no, Voltron. No, one, no, one no I've been Ultraman. Like we, have, we have not. I, I, I feel like Biollante is really uh, never never gotten the same. Oh yeah. my god, that would be a fun one, right? Like yeah, to me, exactly. That's what that that's what you do for a Kong sequel. Like have him in Hollow Earth and have him fight fucking Biollante. Oh my god, that'd yeah. be phenomenal. I mean, but God's over Godzilla versus Biollante, because I think that was like '89 when that came out, that something like that. Because it was yeah. it was the direct sequel to Godzilla '85, and that that was basically the Godzilla minus one of its time. Yeah, you know, with with the tone it takes and like the the, the way Biollante is created. If you haven't seen it, I, I highly recommend it because it, it's a very different kind of a Godzilla uh, from you know, the from the Hisei from the Hisei era. 
but it's a yep. uh, again, it's probably the closest point of comparison I could make to minus one is probably because of reverse violence. And yes, it's and the so, kai she's the kaiju I've been waiting to see make some kind of comeback because way what, way what was, way underutilized. In minus one, did Godzilla have a a purpose of why he was? Fucking shit up, or was he just he was just fucking shit up. No, he's just pissed just off. He's just I'm I'm a monster. You guys <laughs> are like, I'm a monster. You woke me up. I was sleeping. Now I'm pissed. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it, it, and it really yeah. ties because Godzilla, of course, has always been likened to he's the fact that Godzilla, you know, the franchise and the character came about, you know, within a few years of you know the atomic bombs being dropped in pan, and that's intrinsically tied to kind of a. Uh, you know what he's sort of perceived as or what he's always represented you know in minus one he's likened much more to uh or, or they drive that a lot further home and you know because mm -hmm. because it is post-war japan and they drive that idea a lot further home that he is he is you know nuclear weapons personified yeah same with uh what was it godzilla with matthew broderick you know they were talking about how he's exposed to radiation <laughs> anyway Oh, okay. I had a soft spot for that movie when I was a kid. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I did, too. Yeah, I did, it too. It was a, a Roland Emmerich film. I was a big fan of him as yeah. a kid. He, <laughs> he did Independence Day, so I was like, ah, oh, this guy's amazing. The coolest thing about that whole Godzilla was just the trailer. Right after you saw Jurassic Park, it was like, a, you know, the, uh, the 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 bones of the T-Rex, and then his fucking oh, yeah, foot comes his, his crushes comes crashing down through that movie. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that's that's yeah, dope. That's or, or then the everything after that was kind of silly. Of the old man fishing, and then he's running. Yeah, and he runs from back the pier, the and the heads is coming. I was like, well, this is gonna be badass. Well, no, and then and you they didn't watch put that it, in the movie. Like, they didn't put all that in the movie because because they they show in the movie where he's running back across the pier. But then the two in the, this is only in the trailer or the teaser where the two other guys are sitting there watching, and then Godzilla's head like slowly rises out of the water, and his eye pops open in front of them. It's like that part yeah. of it is not in the movie. They should have kept that in there because that was that was actually pretty cool. I mean, that's what got the movie so hyped. I remember when I saw that, I was like, dude, I totally want to see this. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then, like, they're so, shooting missiles at it, and it's, like, dodging them. I'm like, oh, come on. Let's just don't do that. Godzilla don't do that either. Yeah, he's like, oh, oh <laughs> and I missed that yeah. missile. Another one? This way? He, like, he, like, pulled a fucking Neo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just like, yeah, no, what the Really, fuck? though, watch Godzilla the animated series that, you know, that's basically the sequel to the uh, the 98 Godzilla. That's actually pretty awesome, the, the animated series. That's... uh. Yeah, because it, it it sort of finds a nice kind of middle ground between like what the right. movie reimagined him as and kind of like his uh, sort of his more Japanese origin you know, that you know he has, as he was really conceived. And uh, so, if you're more of a Godzilla purist who wasn't a fan of the '98 movie, I think the, if you haven't seen the animated series, I would say that that probably you would probably like that a lot more. So let's shift to our next category, which is or next category, next topic, which was <laughs> the trailer for the <laughs> Penguin <laughs> series. I thought oh. I was really excited for it. I thought it looked really really good. And I think when you look at the Penguin series and you look at the trailer, I mean, look, it's just me, but like, I think this this pretty much ends the debate that like, oh, they're not going to make the Batman too, like, dude. That's the stupidest so argument. Stupid. It's like, shut oh the fuck God. up. Just shut the fuck oh up if you're going to say that shit. I, I saw the trailer. I thought it looks really good, and I can't mm -hmm. wait to see it. And yeah. I, I I got a feeling that Pattinson's Batman is going to be in this series, even if it's just a cameo at the end. I think he's going to be in it because he has to be. I mean, I mean, why not? At the very like, least, is Bruce Wayne's going to show up at the yeah. very, very least. I, I would bet more on Bruce Wayne than Batman in it. I would say. Batman I don't know. Bruce. I mean, it takes I, place I really right after the Batman. So you would... not. I just, I just think it looks pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, on its own, like even if he doesn't show, I wouldn't be disappointed. Like if it's it, just the Penguin and and just the you know the the crime bosses and all that kind of shit and. And whatnot. So, I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks better than fucking Gotham. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> do we? Do we know? Does this? Uh, what, is there a time jump between the film and the series, or is it perfectly after? Because um, when we last left off, this whole city was flooded. So I can't imagine it's going to be right. directly <laughs> right after because they had to then solve for that. I think I remember reading a while ago that it like it picks up not too long after so there's a slight time jump then there there might be yeah okay and they cleared the water out of gotham <laughs> i mean like you'd have to figure sometime has to has to because <coughs> salvatore moroni's still in prison you have yep. to imagine mm -hmm. he, once he finds out that carmine falcone's dead he's probably going to want a piece of the pie that he was part of initially right and they and then cast his, an actor for that role already clancy brown 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, that's Clancy right. Brown is Salvatore Moroni. Yeah. yeah. I will say, I'm glad they kept the and he has I'm glad such they kept a the same tone for the the series. It kind of follows how, the same tone as the film. So yeah. how many? Yeah, how many? Too far from that. How many DC characters has, has Clancy Brown played? Oh God, like, three. He's, 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 so he's, 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 he's Lex. He was General Wade Eiling in the Flash or the Arrowverse, whatever way you want to spin it. And now he's Salvatore Baroni. Well, he was all he voiced Parallax in the Green Lantern movie too. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm so not surprised people don't remember that, but still. <laughs> no, I didn't remember that. But no, he's uh, he's always been Lex. So this is, a, this is at least fourth DC, DC character. He is a uh, either Parallax. voice or portrayed live action. Parallax. <laughs> he was a big fart cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not saying it was. At, at, this. He was the, his. It's part of his resume, okay? <laughs> you know, the Green Lantern, like, like we've said before, is one of those films that, like, they had the right idea, but the oh, execution yeah. just wasn't was a there. Character in the Batman too, the TV show. The, the yeah, he was, yeah, he was, he was, he yeah, was. Um, so he has a uh, he. Yeah, he has quite right a yeah, yeah, quite a history of playing. Yeah. Green Lanterns in the same vein as like Terminator Salvation. Like they had the right idea, just didn't yeah, come together they, the right they, way. They just yeah. had the wrong um, producer. Yeah, it was like they had all the right rest. They had all the right ingredients. And Look, I, just, I put ah. I put Green Lantern with Superman Returns. Like, it's it's. That's high praise. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? There are aspects of Green Lantern that I like, and and just I like the I suit. Do. I think the fucking suit's stupid. I think the eye. That's eye high praise. <laughs> I think the eye piece was to. stupid, but I, I thought the concept of it, you know, being the you know. Uh, the musculature of made know, energy, the yeah, wearer was pretty energy. fucking cool. Um, I think you know the what's his name? He uh, was Mr. Part. Freeze in the Batman. That's who he was. Oh, oh right. yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. He, Mr. Was. Fre- he was the voice of Mr. Freeze yeah. in the animated series. Yes, uh, in, in the, the um, in the How new animated series that? where the, he got redesigned. Mm-hmm. Like, Hello, Batman. Yeah, he was like just a head. And it was yeah, like they had they, they had like ice all around his. It, were, it was typically a dome, oh, but yeah, instead yeah. they had like ice all around his his head. Yeah, yeah. He, um, he has a whole he has a whole section on his Wikipedia page for DC Comics media, as, so it's listing. He, you know, Lex Luthor on C- Superman the Animated Series, just Trident Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. yeah but, he's just he's he's a DC guy. Yeah, but he was also in Thor Ragnarok. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that too, Surter. That's right. Yeah, it is what it is. I, I to this day, Thor Ragnarok doesn't really bother me that much. It's everything I'm not, not I'm just like, like I mean, it's you like guys don't want to hear me talk about Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to hear me talk about. There Thor are pit, there are bits and pieces of Thor Ragnarok that are like, oh, that was funny. Like like when he was like, he's a friend from work, which was some little kid on set that fucking gave oh, that shit. line. Oh shit, he was also it wasn't even them. It was he was a kid also that gave in, him a fucking line. That was funny. He's in John Wick Chapter Four. He was also in Daredevil and The Punisher. He was a major sh- uh, yes, shoonover. He was. That's I right. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. He was mm. in Daredevil. That's right. He, he's one of those guys that pops up like everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> we were just like, oh shit! There oh, he but is we again. all, but we all, and of course, remember who has the Kerr again in the Highlander. Uh, but we yeah, all know Highlander. All, yes. But we all know his all-time greatest performance is uh, Drill and Start Through Zim and Starship Troopers. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Starship laughs> I actually remember him. You, as, you as, got as, the um, brain. He caught the brain bug at the end. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I definitely remember him in Shawshank. He oh, as Shawshank. the guard. Yeah, yeah. The guard, yes. Yeah. That's and right. You know Bob what? Uh, Drug is right. Uh, he was in Gen V. He played. Uh, yes, he was. Like, like the, not the he was headmaster, the, um, but like. The, uh, the dean. He was the dean of the, the, dean, the, yes. the superhero college. Yeah. Yes. Was true. he in Ahsoka? I didn't know. Was he in Ahsoka? Yeah, he was. Also was. Just he, he was, was in that same city. Go ahead. I was about to say he was also just recently uh, the harbinger in John Wick Chapter Four. Yes, but so. he was he's in he's had an uh, Ahsoka on. Uh, he was on the planet that Carl Weathers was on. Remember, he was like, the, yeah. no, 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 no. He was no. on uh, what's it called? Um, well, he's where a, Ezra's he, from. Yeah, where he's he's, from? he's the uh, the, like the mayor, or, but yeah, 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 of of oh. Paul. Lafal, thank he's you. He's the head yes. guy of Lafal. Yeah, he's also in the Mandalorian as like one of the. the aliens I thought he was in Freetown. No, Freetown's on a different no. planet. That, that's on Tatooine. No, he's in Lafal. <laughs> this here's Freetown. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they came up with. Like we got uh, most excellent, most this, most that. What about Freetown? <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. He's also uh, in I camera. I think they did that like it was right one. before they broke for lunch. They're like, oh yeah, in... that's good. Let's break for lunch. He's also in season one of the Mandalorian. Oh, he, he... Bill Burr's other guys. <coughs> He's actually. I, I just pulled just... up his IMDb under the, the quote section. And it, there's this one quote that says, "Can I just one time play the good guy?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he always plays the bad guy. Yeah, or, or plays like the hard ass Will Sargent, or yeah. 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 yeah, or he dies well, like in, all, in almost everything he's yeah. in. You know? <laughs> but, but yes, he's had a but yeah, it's a very prolific career, and yeah, we're going to be seeing him in the Penguin series. So, uh, the yeah. other guy, as a bad guy, as a bad guy, as a bad guy. The other guy in in Starship Troopers, the um, their actual um, their commanding officer when they first go out, and, and he was Harris. in. No, he was in like RoboCop. He was the bad guy. Oh no, was it oh, Weller? No, not be. RoboCop. Uh, he was in. Oh, he was in Total Recall. He he was the oh, bad no, guy. Michael in Total Iron Recall. Side. Michael Iron yeah, side, he's yeah, like, a, he's like, what do you think you're doing? What's your mouth? <laughs> Dark Side in Justice League and yes. Superman: The Infinite Series. Yes. Michael Ironside. Yep. Yeah, that guy's great. And they were both in that same movie too. They were both in Star in Starship Troopers. Yeah. <laughs> Rico, you know what to do. What to do? <laughs> Hell brutal. <laughs> He's the roughnecks. Rico's roughnecks. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> such a great movie. It's like fuck yeah. No, no. no, no. <laughs> that's yeah. why. That's why you need to yeah. get Hell Divers too. You can relive that movie. Buenos Aires got bombed. Like what? <laughs> I know. I think it's. I think it's in the the original story, the book or whatever. Because remember he uh, uh, Rico lived in in Buenos Aires, and that's yeah, what got the, bombed the, by the uh, is nothing but white people in the movie. I know. I was like, huh? How is this? What's going on here? Like, oh, what? <laughs> Andrew was like, I feel like I'm at home. It was weird. I was on the theater. I was like, Buenos Aires. Like, what? Like, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. They're going into battle now. <laughs> anyway, bringing it back to the Penguin trailer. There was only like one <laughs> shot of Clancy Brown in that trailer, and he's in prison. He's talking to Co he's talking to Cobblepot. It's gonna it be was, good. I'm, it's gonna be good. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm right looking with forward you. to this. How many How episodes did it come have? out? Eight, eight episodes. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. Yeah. Colin yeah. Farrell recently said it's like eight hours of dark, gritty fucking storytelling, and I'm like, oh, really? We're allowed? We're allowed to do dark and gritty again now in comic book I media? Oh, so. Okay. Well, Wonderful. now that uh, a certain somebody's not there anymore, they can. They can oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Now that moratorium is lifted. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, they can be darker now because it's it, it, it's an Elf World story, so it doesn't. Oh, it's a multiverse. Do. Oh, and oh, it's on, oh, and, all and, these, and it's on HBO Max. About eight years ago, okay. It, it's on uh, HBO Max, so it's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally not. There's no HBO all. Max. Oh, Max. I'm sorry. It's on Max. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it, do, it does get it right. Uh, Max. It doesn't give it. It just says late 2024 right now. But uh, yeah, so yeah, probably, probably like October, like, November. Probably, yeah, I would guess because they wanted it to be out October. 2022 so and uh i mean obviously you know or, or october 2021 20, and of course you know especially with the halloween theme of the, of the first movie you could definitely you know see why they were going for that so the, i could see like just with the franchise in general they would you know they would really want to try to plant their flag with a specific version of batman you know in kind of the halloween time frame so yeah i oh, guess yeah. like september october you know with the was when we first start seeing the show yeah i agree Mm -hmm. Kind of excited to see uh, the the mom from um, oh fuck what is that show uh, How I Met Your Mother Christina Milioti she's playing um, mm -hmm. Sophia Falcone yeah thank you Sophia Falcone yep that's gonna be interesting because there's like like they mentioned at the end of the Batman movie like there's gonna be a power vacuum for you know who's gonna run Gotham City now and I feel like the Penguin show is gonna like really dig deep into that so you'd have to imagine it's probably gonna wind up being Cobblepot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, you have a show and he doesn't succeed at the end, <laughs> right? <laughs> at the end, he just dies. Like, oh shit! What? <laughs> he didn't even make it to the sequel. That's never getting made. Did you guys also see the rumor that Boyd Holbrook apparently might be Two Face, Harvey Dent in this universe? I, I saw think I heard, that. But I heard like... about Two Face, but I heard heard anything about him. Yeah, there's. It's it's not from a very credible <laughs> source. Imagine if Harvey Dent shows up. That's um, funny. I think. Well, the district attorney died, didn't he? This There's, would be the series which you you would introduce. Yes. Uh, the new Harvey Dent. Either this or the second movie. It's one or the other. Take your pick, right? Like, like well, the, I mean, the, the field is there for him to appear. You yeah. Know what I mean? But I would think you can introduce him as the district attorney in this series, and then in the Batman uh, Part Two, he, he's already the district attorney, and most of the normies would just be like, whatever. 
<laughs> like, oh, that's Harvey. Or Dan. you bring him in as a district attorney, and in the film, you bring him in as Two Face. There you go. Like you yeah, leave. He, he, he evolves the series. Two Face. Well, Something well, happens that makes that turns him that way, and then in the film, you actually didn't see the yeah. full blown Two Face. Maroney is the one who famously scars Harvey Dent. There you go. So yeah, 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 yeah. So you yeah. gotta blame Clancy for that. Of course. Well, by the way, am I the yeah, am no I shame. the only one? Am I the only one when I first saw the Batman, uh, you know, theatrically? Uh, until I at the end, in the in the in the jail in the jail scene at the end with the uh, with Riddler, uh, and, and discovering his unnamed cellmate. Uh, uh, I was. Am I the only one who initially at first, until we heard the laugh, I thought that was Two Face, and then he started laughing. It's like, oh, okay, no, it's obvious who there, this is. But uh, just when I he, saw it, I knew immediately that it was uh, the Joker. But yeah, really, you know, I, I, just yeah, just I the bur- it, even through like it, it just like the the. You know the burned appearance they gave him. I thought, okay, that that could be Two Face. But then if once I, I was like, laugh, it, if I was like hammered, I probably would have thought it was the <laughs> the, the Two Face. But no, I I th- I thought it was a uh, Joker right away. No, I knew it was a Joker right away. Droga says that she introduced Rachel. <laughs> I assume he Rachel Dawes, right? Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's gonna be a one off to the uh, character. To the uh, she'll she'll be unique to the Dark Knight trilogy. I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah, she's got like aspects of Andrea Beaumont in certain respects. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, no, I think this 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 saga that Matt Reeves is developing. I think his love interest is probably going to wane from like Catwoman to maybe like. It, I mean, you could do Andrea Beaumont. You could introduce that character. Like, like given the way that well, you this could also operates. do Vicky Vale because she's sure. Let's Batman just go ahead and go full blown Batman eighty nine all over. <laughs> by the, by the, she's from the comics. <laughs> Yeah, she is. I know. It's oh, crazy okay. I mean, that we've never okay. seen Vicky Vale in live action one referring. time mm-hmm. since 89. I think Batman's right behind me. Yep. Oh my He's going to whoop yeah. my ass right now. Oh, yeah, that's the cool one. That's the Jim Lee version. Yeah, it's the Jim Lee version. Thank but yeah, you. Yeah, so, Jim no. Lee fucking knocked it out of the park with that. Right? Yes. I have that oh, on. Sure. It's awesome. He, so. This actually, like, when they released this, it, it, it got people way more excited. For, I mean, oh, we, yeah, hell we're, yeah. We were already excited for it, but this helped. Quite oh, it a bit. Definitely was like, oh, because fuck. the costume just it look, I'm sorry, but like this looks better than Pattinson because it's a drawing, you know, but it just looks more grimacing, more menacing. Just awesome. I mean, it's got the um, Lee flair to it. So, yes, I, yeah. I just want them to to update just his his cow, his mask. I, 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 I think oh, you don't suit. like the you don't like the I think that, I think his whole suit is here. probably going to be really that. Here. I just don't like the scene. I think so too. It reminds yeah. me of Catwoman, you know, just like they did the that as an homage and... to the 66. Well, I, I, yeah. th- I think the idea, you know, they, they, well, they present with Pattinson initially is it, 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 he's still because he's in year two. Yeah, you know, his you know, not just the suit, but also just the whole persona of Batman. He's created it's still very much a work in progress. So yeah. I, I would anticipate that the, the suit will maybe not have like a radical redesign but it's like you will see that he's made he's made augmentations to he's made adjustments upgrades to it. yeah yeah i hope it goes yeah. into a positive direction uh whereas it did, it went to a negative direction with nolan's batman costume i think it's gonna be you know i've been saying since since the movie started shooting it's gonna be a build a batman he's gonna continue to just build a batman yeah he, he's gonna he's gonna continue to like build upgrades. himself in, into a more I- iconic, identifiable version that you know hardcore fans will, look, by the end of his tenure as Batman, they'll look at it and be like, "Yeah, that's fucking Batman." What he started out as, mm, not so much, but what he's at now, yeah, that's Batman. Yeah. Well, I, and I kinda, I've always kind of said this, like you know, Pattinson, he's the only Batman actor we've had so far who who could essentially be his own Robin. That's true. Yeah, I buy that. So, so question. Speaking of this, let's just say the Batman verse or Gotham verse. There's been, I, and I know I this know isn't it. going to happen, so I'm going to be very clear. I have no expectations <laughs> this is going to result in anything, but there's been a big push now ever since the Bad Boys 4 trailer came out. Oh, yeah, we saw that. That yeah. since the directors for that were the directors for Batgirl, Batgirl. How, bad could a ba- how bad could Batgirl have been to never have been released or now will never be released based on... The, the great response Bad Boys 4 trailer is getting. Well, technic- technically, they st- they could still release it. They would just have to return the tax write-off they got for it. They'd have to do that or release it free of charge in any way. Yeah, they're not going to do that. Send it out as... <laughs> well, correct. They're not going to do that. that. But I'm just saying that would be their only two options is either take the back. Yeah. I, th- I think uh, we'll see or... the fucking air cut before we see Batgirl. <laughs> oh, I, I think I, we're good. I, I want to see the damn air cut. cut. I want yeah. the air cut. But the air cut has a better chance of being released than yes. the Batgirl. Exactly what I was just going to say. You're absolutely right. I think the air cut has... 
far more better chances of being released than Batgirl yes. does at and, this point. And what point. are the chances of it being released? Slim to none. So the question is, I think it'll be released seeing this trailer. Do we think that Batgirl was truly as bad as it was perceived to be seeing so far what we've seen with Bad Voice 4 trailer? Well, considering the guy who said it was bad and unreleasable was Peter fucking Saffron. And we've seen what movies he <laughs> produced over the last year. Oh, Superman really Legacy. One, one of them I have to suffer through for a watch party on Saturday. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Meet the Spartans. It's a great yes. movie. I mean, <laughs> no, it's not. You know, this, th this, this guy said that movie was unreleasable. And I'm just like, dude, you make yeah. you, you produce Shazam Fear of the Gods. Define unreleasable, please. Like <laughs> that movie sucks. The fuck on. Like, that movie what sucked. are you talking about? That movie sucked. Yeah. I don't care. It just it was. Well, that, was, that should have been unreleasable. It's, it's 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 just it's just bad PR. It's just really yeah, bad or, PR or to be like calls it PR. Yeah, because you're talking trash about your your own fucking IP. Right, and you're talking shit about people who put their blood, sweat, and tears into this fucking project. Brennan fucking Frazier, who won an Oscar for The Whale, and you guys are just going to completely disregard his performance as Firefly in this movie? Yeah. Another fucking version of Michael Keaton as Batman? Like, look, uh, <clears throat> diehard fans are probably going to side with the studio and be like, well, you know, it would have made much sense continuity-wise. No fucking shit. Not anymore, because yeah. they're going to reboot the whole fucking universe anyway. What does it matter? Well, yeah. not only that, though, but, like, when they made the decision to actually, you know, shelve the movie... My belief was that oh they're doing that one because they want to make uh, for I I thought the main reason why was because they were shifting gears and that Batgirl and Keaton's Batman was not going to be in in the fold anymore so that okay that's why they're shoving because well, it doesn't fit with continuity no but like I thought that was one of the core reasons but as it turns out like the decision to shelve this shit happened even before they decided all this shit. So like they, like they had already decided that, that they were going to shelve this movie before they even announced that they were making changes to the Flash. So it was like, oh, so they just did it just because they're just assholes. Or it was like, yeah, fuck this. Well, and the, the thing about it is, the thing I've always kind of maintained uh, is that you know, I mean, really, the the downfall of Batgirl was was the the way it was conceived. It was not conceived as you know, let, let's make a Batgirl. Movie. It wasn't conceived as like Joker. It wasn't conceived as like the Batman. It was conceived as right. a studio that had you know a smorgasbord of fuck ups that they were trying to you know put band-aids on and you know they and in such a it, it was it was a coia movie really is what it was it, it that's it that it was conceived not as a backer movie it wasn't conceived for reasons of storytelling it was conceived. the same thing with the flash you know the flash was not a flash movie the flash was like some fucking smorgasbord of fucking like it, it was a, a justice league minor movie you know? a little bit but i mean no the, the flash, no, the flash, had, the flash. More, had much more of a base this is as far as like storytelling it back because backer was coming after the ramifications of the flash so yeah but it, it but it was it, it was because of the fact that the studio under the regime at the time you know they didn't have they kept claiming they had a plan but all they it was a plan they were just assembling on the fly and that, that had no they had no streamlined way of seeing this through they had mm -hmm. no it was it was not it was something that they were making up as they were going and that was really yeah. what was the downfall of back was it just fell into that I think, I think i've said this before but i'm pretty sure and i have this on good authority the only plan walter hamada had was listen to whatever the fuck jeff johns was telling him that was yeah, his plan i believe, it. I believe and it. that well, plan was a fucking failure because through and through if you look at what the flash was about like the the changes that they were going to make to the flash about you know putting Cavill back in it, putting Gal Gadot back in it, uh, but Keaton was still going to be Batman because because it was going to have Affleck made... like he, he, they got they swap places somehow went through the whole... yeah well Affleck would have been lost in time or like Barry Barry you have to you have to find me yeah. but the, no, but the thing is is that him. but the thing is is that like Keaton was still going to be the primary Batman of that universe because yeah. and so with that being said you still could have actually gone through with the Batgirl movie. And it would have made sense within that the continuity of that universe, um, but again they decided no fuck that. It was really weird that they even did that that they just shelved the movie. It was like whoa dickhead move here, um, and now all that hard you work know, that they went into it was is all for naught. I really wish they would have just done something a little more old school, and just recast a different fucking person as Batman, and then move forward with a different continuity. Like, if you weren't too keen on the fact that Zack Snyder killed Dick Grayson, this was your opportunity to bring in a new actor as Batman, 
rewrite the idea that his fucking dead Robin isn't Dick Grayson and make it Jason Todd. That way you can justify maybe having a Nightwing and you can have like a Batman and maybe even a Dick Grayson in the Batgirl movie. That way you don't you have to like try and things, you could have done a lot of things differently, right? Yeah. But Warner Brothers being Warner Brothers was like, and it, 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 it's so it is so obvious to me at this point, looking back on <clears throat> like when we go back to like the first DC fandom and how much they were pushing you know multiverse, 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 else worlds, else worlds, else worlds, all that. It's it, I, I think from the perspective of the filmmakers involved, I think they were looking at it as like, oh, this is opening so many doors in terms of storytelling, and st in terms of these things being able to coexist from the perspective of the director of the studio. Yeah, from the from the perspective <laughs> allegedly. Of the from the perspective of the people exactly running the studio, right. it, it was nothing more than CYA. It was nothing more than we screwed up. We need a way to look like. We yeah. Can well, the problem is, is that is that, okay, you don't the, you learn from your mistakes, but these guys don't learn from their fucking mistakes. Well, not only they not learn from it, they they just learn we're gonna make worse ones. They run from. Well, not only that, they not yeah, only do they not learn from their mistakes, they always just put a different person in charge every three to five years, and that doesn't help at all. Yeah. Now yeah, that might doesn't. happen again now with this latest pending merger that they can now do within the next couple of days we'll see what happens we'll yeah, see what one, happens. one, one see thing what I, happens. I tell I'll, I'll, got, I tell I, people it's like life is a DC fan I mean it's not, it's never boring if nothing else <laughs> well it's never boring you have the animated shows <laughs> it's just disappointing here's the thing the only guarantee is that Matt Reeves is getting a penguin TV show Batman part two part three okay you can make the conversation of whether or not that might or might not happen because it it, it just hasn't happened yet because we haven't seen part two and if part two would justify a part three but even then i feel like dude is gonna get his fucking trilogy like that that's just i mean kind I of a ideally it's, 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 it's do fucking it back, back man yeah exactly that too like ideally you would do it back to back that way you can just cover your bases all at once we'll see though yeah that's uh, we'll again, but, uh, we'll but yeah like you said it's like they they, they keep they keep not learning from their mistakes and they keep rotating and i mean how many times they've had this revolving door of savior it's like ever since they showed zach snyder the door it's like okay it's going to be jeff johnson's savior now it's going to be walter hamada that or, or joss whedon but it was going to be joss whedon or what was the order of it it's, it's happened so many times i can't even keep track of the order of it so it's been, the, the, it was, it, it, they showed Snyder walked away, right? And then you have Jeff Johns. He was in as president by the time Zach walked out. And then he, they brought in Joss Whedon. Then yeah. fucking Johns gets fucking ousted as president. Then Walter Hamada gets put in as president. And then after he takes some time in his power, fucking Jason Kilar comes in as head of Warner Media. And he's got conflicting fucking shit going on with Ann Sarnoff and Toby Emmerich and everyone fucking else, right? And then yeah. you've got fucking the merger that happened, and then everyone else is fucking gone. David Zaslov comes in and kind of puts in Abdi and DeLuca in charge intermittently before he finally decides on James Gunn. And then James Gunn's like, yeah, I'm just going to fucking reboot everything except what I worked on. Cool. And David yeah. Zaslov's like... <laughs> well, and they've, nope. they've, done, oh. they've rug pulled so many creators. Yeah, that too. Now, now they just... Now what do you do? Now you have I, someone I, like... James Gunn, who's like, well, oh, I'm this. That's I'm why they're signing CEO. actors. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna direct. I'm. Gonna, I'm just gonna do it all myself. What about yeah. like the Batman that, that's... Beyond animated movie that we saw concept art for? That would have been fucking cool. Yeah. Right? yeah. And that's why they're signing yeah. actors. That's why they're not signing writers. That's why they're not signing fucking directors. They're signing actors. They signed what? Tom Cruise. They signed Timothy Chalamet. The last time they signed an actor, I think, was either Matt Reeves or Andy Muschietti, and that was like last year before the strikes. But they aren't yeah. actors what? or directors. Wait, yeah, you mean, uh, that's so. what I'm saying. That's the last signing time. talent. Signing talent. And and yeah, the other I thing see, too is that sorry. the other thing about it too is that uh, uh, you know, with the you know, with with the, again this latest penny where it, it's uh, you know, or, or even without that, you know, like um, Zaslov's point. I mean, this really illustrates kind of I think the the depth of his thinking on this as far as like handling DCIP and establishing DC Studios. You know, he he had that that quote that he gave. Where he said, uh, well, "Well, Gunn had like, and I don't have this verbatim, but the the essence of it is, you know, James Gunn had like a massive hit in the Guardians movies. So it's like I'm looking at that. It's like, well, why isn't this guy in charge of all of DC? And you know, that's yeah. bogus. That he said that because what what do we know? It's like nobody else wanted the job, and they were begging uh, Todd Phillips to take it. And he would have said the exact same thing as Todd Phillips said. Oh, this guy had a big hit, Joker. It's like why is he just not captain of all of DC? So that really said, that really illustrates to me a lot of. I mean, I, I'm not even confident in saying that I that uh, that Zaslav has even seen the Guardians movies. He's just 
uh, he's like, he's, I'm establishing DC Studios because this is a big IP with the studio I just did a merger with. And, you know, this guy, I'm just throwing a dart. It's like, okay, who's who's a filmmaker in CDMs who's had big hits right now? It's James Gunn. People seem to like him. I mean, they got upset when he got fired from Guardians 3. So let's bring him over. He, you know, it's like he was popular. You know, case closed. End of story. <laughs> I think all he saw was the balance sheet. Allegedly, yeah, he didn't yeah, even Guardians. watch Coyote versus That's all he Zach. saw. He saw how the yeah. money that made. Yeah. And he's like, oh, we'll bring that person. Whoever did that, regardless if it was James Gunn or anybody else, looked at the mm-hmm. balance sheet, saw the profit that was made, bring that person in. We'll, ha- we'll, yeah. do, we'll do something like that. Yeah. And allegedly, so. he didn't even watch Coyote versus Acme, which is produced or written by James Gunn, one or the other. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. why would you ask a fucking project from the guy you just put in power? Like, the, and and unfortunately no. for James Gunn, being co-CEO, writer, director, and everything for Superman Legacy, he's put all of his eggs in one basket. That 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 doesn't perform and yeah. exceed expectations. None of it makes he's pretty any much sense, just dude. he's just None gotten himself out of sense. a job. Yep. So. And again, you and you add, you know, the what the third merger in six years coming up here pretty soon. It's like it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. Very volatile. <laughs> volatile. And, and I said this in a and pre- in, in a previous conversation if anyone's ever worked in corporate America, you know, anytime new leadership comes in, they always have their own plans, their own ideas, yep. and they may sell it's very possible, or it's least not out of the realm of possibility. New ownership comes in and says, well, we don't like James Gunn and, or, and, or we don't like his 10 year vision. Have a nice day. We'll take the loss as a write off and we'll either shelve DC for now. We'll do small independent, you know, very focused films. And we're not going to focus on a universe right now. Because it's just too much of a hassle. But we're going to yeah. let Matt Reeves finish his trilogy. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't look at it as like a broad universe as we're trying to bring <laughs> yeah, in every yeah, DC character. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I mean, because obviously that's already in motion. But they may say, you know, we're done. We're done with the universe business for now. Let's just focus on. They shelve stories. the Batman, uh, but they go, OK, but well, we're going to green light uh, the Penguin season two. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's the again this goes back to i mean when phil had some direct interaction with uh, james Gunn on social media when when you uh you commented uh, <laughs> what's how, how is the the leap from one universe to another peacemaker going to be explained and, and Gunn said yeah that will be addressed in season two um but again it's like that's also that that's that's one of many question marks that are still going to be hovering over it assuming the merger doesn't you know change the tr- course of history yet again uh, but one of the big, I mean, right now, the big question hovering over it is, okay, so uh, what, what's, I mean, if you're, if you're telling us that the preceding universe was not, you know, was not going to, was not working or was not going, you weren't, had no intention of completing it long term, then what are you doing with this? I mean, it, it's a, to the naked eye, this could, you know, come very much, this could resemble or this could come very much off as it's like we're you know, we, we have to reboot this for the sake of the brand, but he gets he gets he playing with his toys. Exactly. Yeah. And real mm-hmm. quick, let's go to Axel Drogo, who has a five Australian dollars hey! super chat. Hey! All right. hey! All right. <laughs> yeah, just there for um, whatever he <laughs> says did anyone get a chance to watch my movie red robin uh yeah I, I, like i said the other day I, i've seen about half of it uh i need to get back to watching the rest of it i've just been really busy lately yeah where is it I, my question is where is it posted uh, i, I saw be, it uh, I, I, well, link. I, I, I do i did see the link i haven't clicked on it yet it's well i think you posted it. did you share that on your twitter i think he, he has it on his youtube but i think it's unlisted right now it's I want to whip it out. I sure do. <laughs> I, I've seen, I, I, I've, heard, I've heard it mentioned previously, but I just didn't know where where it was posted at. Antonio, what's, what's up? up? Hey, Antonio. But yeah, check out Red that's Robin. That's Axel's fan film. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says, "Ah, it's public." Oh, so okay. definitely check ah. that out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, guys, we, I think that's gonna wrap up the show as it is anyway. Because I gotta run. I know Ryan's gotta run unless you guys want to keep go. going. I said I made that weird. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. I, I, I know, I know. Phil has to leave. Uh, Sean, he's got to go. Uh, Brad, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you stick around. Brad, I have to establish. My, my my four. I, I'm still, I'm still, you know, stealing my fortitude for this bullshit. Meet the Spartans movie. I have to suffer through for charity. It's a great poor son of a bitch. You poor son of a bitch. It, it's it was a all great for a good cause. cause. It's, it's a great, great cause. cause. It's a great you cause. guys won't let me get to the raid too. Damn it. 
And so far, they've raised how much money is it? Uh, we, we've raised, we, uh, let me look it up here. It should still be, uh, I think we've raised 10200 so far. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. All right. So they've been there pounding the pavement on, on that, and, and they've gone all the way up to $10,000. And they set a new record now. They're trying to hit $15,000. So that's and, really and what's awesome. What's that for? AFSP. We, 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 Oh, nice. yeah, and we, we want to do that. Uh, <laughs> the Sci Fi Center. <laughs> yeah, we, we and guys, go if you have any extra funds uh, that you can spare, uh, jump on over to DJW Art uh, and uh, pick up some of his prints. Uh, they're available for a limited time. Um, follow everybody here on their Instagrams. I'm sure that Sean. Instagram. Is that yep. yours? Uh, is yeah, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's my handle on all social media. That's your handle. And, and Brad, Kieran, that's, yeah. that's your handle as yeah. well. So if you, want, if you like what you heard tonight, uh, follow everybody and um yeah any final thoughts meet the spartan go watch the batman <laughs> go watch the batman yeah. um, um, go, watch, the go watch episode three scary oh, yeah. movie is an absolutely fantastic franchise oh, <laughs> x-men 97 God. rules yes x-men yeah. 97 fucking it's pretty good rules. it's pretty good i'm gonna check out the third episode yeah, right as soon as we get off and hey, guys if you want to check out some of my oh, uh, superhero else. shirts check them out over at t public and uh, and actually, one quick reminder: yeah. uh, uh, Andre and I will be doing the, a weekly recap watch party on uh, the X Men. Yes, we so, will. So <laughs> just heads up on Wednesday. <laughs> I had to move down here. <laughs> nice. Right. Yeah. So, so every sure, week we'll, we'll be doing yeah, a, sure a sure watch party. Yeah, yeah, that sounds. We're checking good. out uh, X Men ninety seven uh, episode four, um, and that'll be uh, every Tuesday, Tuesday. Well, Wednesday at mid or Tuesday at midnight, which is actually Wednesday. But yep. we'll definitely check that out. Yarp. All right. And with That's that it. being said, we will catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.